Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Wrestling Rehap Up podcast. I'm your host, Mari Forth, and with me, as always, my co host, my tag team partner, the Rick Boogs to my Shinsuke Nakamura, Mr. Mascot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hit that high note like Rick does, but it, that wasn't too bad. I wasn't ready. No, I wasn't ready. <laughs> thank you for thank you for uh, always for having me, Mari. We know that you could you could have gotten rid of me a long time ago. Happy to be here. Happy to be your your Rick Boogs. Yeah, I need to get my air guitar. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Such a great pairing. I can't wait to talk yeah. about it later. Like, Ooh. wow. Yeah. Amazing. Ooh, ooh amazing. Boogs. Like yeah, boogs. boogs. Hate that name. But it's so weird, but it gross. It, it is kind of, but it's so fun to say it though. It's so is weird. Is it though? Mm. Boogs. Yeah, that's boogs. how he says it. I like yeah. it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I don't know where this is. Oh, so much energy. Yeah. Mari, you're bringing the, I know. You just bring that goofy energy. energy with you. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't I know. ready for it. I, I need it are, this morning. Are, are you ready? Are you ready for the wrestling we're happy today? You know, that's what I, podcast we're on. This is oh. the podcast we are on. And, you know, it's been a great week. We got to see each other IRL again. We it's did. always a good time whenever we get to hang out. We did uh, the two of us and about 100 of our closest friends uh, <laughs> at Bryson when presents. Uh, how, Mari, what was just sum it up? What was that like? Tell Tell the people about it. That was really fun. We got to that. That was my first like Survivor slash RHAP adjacent style event. Um, we went to Bryson when they 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 came down to DC. They we watched the episode of Survivor, which that episode. I, I anyways, we watched the episode of Survivor. <laughs> there. I mean, we kind of did. <laughs> we kind of watched it. Kind of. Um. But that that was kind of a good episode to kind of not watch because nothing mm -hmm. happened at the end of it. There's no tribal council or repercussions. You know, we basically have to just go back and rewatch it for all the to explain all the twists, which probably if I was watching at home, I'd have to do it anyways again because that was just so much going on. Um, but we got to see Isaiah. We got Isaiah, to see Jason shout Reed. Out, shout out, Jason yeah, Reed, shout, shout out. Shout out. So we got to, of course, Bryce Wynn and of course Queen Sari. Oh, oh my god, it was so fun. Oh, the Queen Sari was in the building. Jat Ooh, Jatia. Mm -hmm. who, who else? Keep it. Ovi. Ooh, Ovi. Ovi, yes, Ovi and oh, Hannah. That was that. so fun. They are so nice. Down. Ooh, yeah, it was, it was so fun. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, like it was. You know, um, it was one of also my first events just out of the house, period. Yes. So yes. Um, it was cool to like safely gather or what or whatnot. So, yeah. And I will add, um, you know, it was mostly pleasant. But there was some controversy. There was some drama. Um, uh -oh. If you're watching the Instagram or Halfgrams, you might have seen toward the end of the story, which I was taking over. There oh, was right. a challenge. <laughs> um, Bryce. <laughs> Uh, unbeknownst to to me to Mari <laughs> issued a challenge um, yes. to to Chappelle. So mm -hmm. Chappelle, if you're listening, I mean, I guess there's going to be a tag team match. I didn't. <laughs> I will say for one, I didn't realize that uh, Bryce and Mari were a tag team. I'm happy to be on the outside as the manager. We can make it a six man mm -hmm. tag team match. Me, uh, Mari, Bryce. We have Wendell, Jacob Jones, Chappelle on the other side. Let's do this. I'm ready for a fight yes. because <laughs> Chappelle's my ops. He's my number one ops. He's the ops. Or he could be. I don't know. <laughs> I need, I need, I need enemies. Yes, exactly. Need enemies. So that was, that was so fun. Was like that. it really yeah. was. I, I love that. And I, I can't wait like to really, you know, once, once, you know, know it alls maybe or more yeah. RHAP events happen because it's so amazing to meet these people that you interact with on either a, di a daily basis or, you know, during yeah. big brother season, survivor seasons, whatever. And getting to see them in person was just so, so nice. Honestly. And yeah, I, and I will say to add in a genuine comment to second, what Mari is saying is that it was really um, nice just to be surrounded by so many people who either knew us from the wrestling rehab up, um, who mm -hmm. knew us from Big Brother podcasting, Survivor, all of these other shows that we appear on on RHAP, and um, 
even just people who appreciate us. So it was cool to see that because sometimes it feels like nobody is listening. Um, but to right. know that you have, to know that you actually have people listening and they are literally in your city is like a whole different vibe. So that was cool. And yeah, really I is. will say it was awesome because I got to cap off my night like on Clubhouse talking with Rob, telling him what happened about really? the event. Yeah, How? it was like How did you uh, impromptu. Manage? It was impromptu. <laughs> Um, I was, I had a great night. It was a good yes, time. Yes, um, but Rob was like, <laughs> Rob was like, what happened at the event? And I'm like, let me tell you, Rob, we had the that's, best time That's ever. amazing. So hopefully if you're listening, you too check out a Bryson When Presents event. There's one coming up in Philly, I think on mm -hmm. November 17th or one of those days that is uh, a Wednesday that week in November. So check that out. Um, mm -hmm. The tickets are available and Thanks if you're if you were in attendance and met us in person. So great meeting you, and yes. thanks for actually tuning in to our smooth, sultry voices here on okay. the podcast. Okay, all right, yeah. Let's was, get into oh, some news. Oh, news! So, we like news. Yeah, let's get into some news. So, um, we got some sad news. R O R. Ring of Honor. Yes, R O H. R -O -H. Why did that sound? I was saying it right, but it sounded so funny on. You the did time. a good. Job. Anyways. Yeah, ROH released their um, entire roster. Maybe that's why. It was like too many R's there. Uh <laughs> but also, it's like such bizarre news, too, because yeah. I remember when I read this, I was like, is this Very real? Confusing. Is it fake? I, I actually thought when I first read the sentence that it was some kind of fake news, like yeah. uh, some kind of um, like satire uh, of wrestling because some there are news yeah, sites like K, I think kayfabe news might be one I don't even remember but I there are different remember, news yeah. sites that like make fun of wrestling news I thought that this was it um this was very real which is bizarre because we've never really seen anything like it truly yeah exactly yeah. and so they basically from what I read um any of the talent that contracts that they're they're fulfilling the contracts up until uh December 31st this year. So at when next year goes goes in, nobody who's under contract will be under contract anymore. I think like if their contracts were after that, that there's they're gonna work something out. But basically they're dropping, they're releasing their roster by releasing them from their contracts. They can there's no non-complete compete clauses or anything like that. They can immediately go work. Um, but basically I at first I thought this meant I was like, so is ROH closing? Um, but no, apparently it just means that they just can't, I, I'm assuming can't afford to have people under contract. So yeah. what it sounds like to me is that ROH is basically becoming an indie uh, wrestling promotion then. Isn't that how yeah, the, which, the in, in which it hasn't is? really been? It hasn't truly been one in a long time because they were one yeah. of the. It, I mean, because in my mind they've always been an indie company, but they just right. have also been big on exclusive deals and yeah. It's good, I think, at the end of the day. I mean, one, it's not great that they're not able to still have a roster and, like, pay people and have them on board. But mm -hmm. it is nice that, like, they're they're kind of making a clean break and saying, hey, there are other opportunities. Go out there and do those. You could still work with ROH, no hard feelings, but we can't have you under contract anymore. So that's the downside, and there's really not anything positive about this situation. Right, that's what but. I'm gonna say. But that's just like that's wrestling that happens sometimes yeah. in, in the wrestling business. Yeah, because I mean, I may be wrong about this, but that's what seems to always be the difference for me between, well, like if we're talking business wise, between like an indie promotion and yeah. a major wrestling promotion is the contracts, even though technically all wrestlers are. <laughs> independent you know, contractors. Independent contractors. It makes no it's sense. It's a whole but conversation for a whole other for, day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so ROH, like legit, just that that sucks. Um, but at least they're not closing the doors. Um, hopefully, even though people aren't con contracted, hopefully they'll get fair compensation when they do work with ROH. So we'll see. Totally. Yeah. Um, and you know, best of luck to all the talent. Um, who are affected affected by this um, hopefully you know they can bounce back or it didn't you know hurt them too bad but um it it, it sucks you know it, it really does it it, it sucks um, whenever people lose their jobs or job security you never want to see that so um, yeah 
yeah, best of luck to all the talent. Yeah. Um, also, uh, something I am so happy to talk about, Big E was oh. on The Breakfast Club. Now, oh. I am not the biggest fan of The Breakfast Club. I didn't know. I am not I'm not the biggest fan of the Breakfast Club. They are well no, no one very hit or bad. Um, same, I yeah. Mean, same. Yeah, exactly. However, however, oh. big however. E being on the Breakfast Club for, for people who don't know, the Breakfast Club is like one of the like like most listened to stations in New York. It's like one of the exactly. most listened to morning shows in New York, hosted by Charlemagne Charlemagne the Job. Why can I, <laughs> I can't speak Charlemagne morning. The God, the God who is Angela also Biggie. hit or miss, yeah. and Biggie, and, and <laughs> Charlamagne the God, Angela Yee, and DJ Envy. Oh, <laughs> um, they host the Breakfast Club, um, and this is like really big, like in in the Black community. Like the Breakfast Club yeah. is is really huge for for some people, and so for him to go on the Breakfast Club talking about wrestling um i will uh, again i will shout out when Charlemagne does something right i'll shout him out um he did a great job with the interview interviewing biggie him and angela Yee. they were saying i don't know how true this is but angela Yee's like boyfriend might be like heavy into wwe but like they 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 approached the, the subject with such respect that it was really nice to see and big big e um really answered the questions really, really well. So, you know, normally they don't have a lot of tact sometimes when it comes to certain yeah. subjects. <laughs> so uh, it no. was nice to see uh, <laughs> a difference here. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> but one of the main points that I took away from uh, Biggie's interview was Biggie talking about the importance of representation in the wrestling business and how him and the New Day really want to um, represent the um, for black people out there who are like, you know, nerds or gamers and, and show themselves and how we're not all a monolith, like all the stuff we've said on this podcast yeah. all, the whole time and how you can be yourself. You don't have to be put into a box and have to be uh, portrayed this one way just because you're black. And he also shouted out Bianca yeah. Belair. Um, but it was just, it was such a really, really, really good interview and kudos to Big E for really like taking this title reign and running with it. What did you think of the yeah. interview, Matt? Yeah, I, okay. I did not listen to the interview. I need to go back and listen to it. Absolutely. But you even saw the clip. What you, what you said. Mm -hmm. I, said, I did see some clips. I did see some clips mm -hmm. on, on Twitter. But I think the big thing I would say, just mostly based off of what you said, is just stressing this idea. I think it's cool, like across, beyond even wrestling, we're seeing like more dynamic representation where it's not just the stereotypes. So mm -hmm. like Survivor, big brother we get all of these different types of characters and it's cool like to more feel more fully represented to have mm -hmm. as you were saying mari more blurs represented in the media yes that we see, mm -hmm. even in pro wrestling and biggie is someone who is not always respected by fans especially because he's a world champion but he brings the goofiness he brings the mm -hmm. campiness the funny. that, that mm -hmm. the funny and people mm -hmm. don't always see that in world champions so i also love that even beyond like him as a black man uh proving or providing that representation he's also providing representation for like characters and people like him where in the future we might say oh that person's a comedy character but they could be world champion. What's to say, say that they can't? Um, so I I love that, and I'm he's he's awesome, and I love that he's making the rounds. Like it's it's yes. important, and hopefully that helps bring in some different types of fans, some melanated uh, fans. Yeah, uh, too. exactly. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, because like we said, we can complain a lot about WWE, and if we can. you know, we really can. Um, but the steps that they have made made um, for like diversity and stuff has been like really good to see. And, and even Big E said in one of the clips, he's like, you know, we have, we've, we've gone far, but we can still always go further. You can always push for more mm. diversity. And so I just like that they are even attempting to be in these mediums like breakfast club, or like we were say, saying, rolling loud a, a, um, a while, even if the, the, they flop, which Biggie did not flop, but even if they're flop, the attempt being made to reach another audience is just so, I love to see that. And it's just, and it just is uh, the opposite. When you look at other wrestling promotions that just only care about one single demo and they're telling you to your face we just care about one demo and that's it you know so um i i really i really like this 
Yeah, um, and you know what? Just take a sec. Let's just take a second, Mari. If you're watching on our YouTube, you just see <laughs> a beautiful picture of Big E uh, with those muscles. Big, he's a big meaty man. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably gonna slap some meats later. We'll talk more about the meat slapping as we go along. Um, but just take it in that beautiful smile. We love it. Watch us on YouTube, as I'm sure we'll yep. plug many times as we go along with our sultry voices. There now we back go. Back to the action. <laughs> So, uh, we got an email this week. We did mail time. Oh, Sorry. Jesus. I, I I'm, I'm blue clu blues clues out. Like my <laughs> Monday through Friday is nothing but blues clues. So I I'm so have sorry it. to hear that. <laughs> or good um, for you. I don't know. Very wholesome. Well, I have a toddler, so. Yes. I, oh, I thought that was just you watching. No. no. Why am I voluntarily watching? You know, like balance out pro wrestling with Blue's Clues. No. You and Steve. It is against my will. Oh, my God. You probably at learned so much. Like your letters and numbers, <laughs> crayon, crayon colors. So, uh, Matt, uh, we have an email, correct? Yes, we have an email from Jacob. Uh, <laughs> Jacob, shout out. Thank you for emailing us. And if you, you, I'm talking to you, like literally you, the person who's listening or watching, if you want to get in touch, you could email us at wrestling at robhiswebsite.com. That's wrestling at robhiswebsite.com. But Jacob emailed us. And Jacob, thank you so much for the love. Just going to read a little bit of this email. Um, Jacob writes, just wanted to start by saying thank you for the work you do each week on the pod. You help me stay entertained <laughs> through my work week. I didn't need to read that part, Mari. That's like, we had to. but thank you so much, Jacob. We appreciate like it. We are flattered. It. And, you know, I think just this context that Jacob provides in this email that he had not watched a single second of WWE content since about 2012, grew up going to shows, watching shows. We talk about this a lot on the podcast, the lapsed fans and that was Jacob for a ton of years until about a month ago, the end of September, where Jacob randomly decided to watch an old pay-per-view on Peacock and mm -hmm. fell down this rabbit hole, which has included listening to our smooth, sultry voices on whatever uh, wrestling or half up. That's what our podcast mm -hmm. is called. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, just some notes from Jacob that we wanted to touch on um, from the Crown Jewel pay-per-view because we did talk a little bit about that, but we did invite you all to kind of give us some more thoughts. And so from Jacob, number one thought was about Bianca Belair. Um, mm -hmm. Jacob writes, Bianca Belair is an absolute beast. She's quickly become one of my favorite female wrestlers of all time. And I'm so happy that WWE has been pushing their female talent since I stopped watching. In another note, Jacob agrees with us that um, it really does seem that recently Charlotte has seemed over it, not into it, which makes him a little bit sad, makes Jacob a little bit sad um, because she can be such a compelling character on her own. Just mm -hmm. to kind of stop in on there, obviously, um, you know, Mari, I know that you are all for the Bianca love. Um, yes. And, you know, I, I I think there's a lot of news that came out after we recorded. Yeah, that like might literally imply after that we Charlotte recorded. is over it. But I think that maybe that's like more established now. I don't know if it's as much of a question as it was a week ago. Yeah, we can talk, we can talk about it a little bit later. Um, but yeah, as soon as we got off the, the air, basically, there's all of these reports. Like some of them, I'm like. Hmm. Uh, you know, but like, oh, there is major heat behind behind the scenes, right? Um, there are major heat heat behind the scenes because that segment didn't go the way it was supposed to, like we we talked yeah. about. But like, people were mad, and the funny thing is, like, we all know there's no love lost between like my feelings for Charlotte or whatever. But the how hard people were going in on her for like a whole week weekend yeah. even i was like y'all y'all gotta chill like even i was like y'all gotta chill <laughs> take a like, seat <laughs> yeah yeah take several like because once that ball several. starts rolling yeah especially when it comes to like women talent and stuff like that like it, it you know, it gets so much like, oh, she's so entitled. She this, this and this, this and that. Like, again, nothing that I don't think I've ever said, but I don't think like calling her names or, or questioning like her integrity and all that is really that necessary, you know? So it was a lot. They like, 
Yeah. Yeah. That, that Charlotte stuff was going in. That we'll, was, we'll talk that about was it. a lot. Yeah. We will talk yeah. about it. And just to, you know, I also will just wrap point up. Out, Jacob's there's, email. there's even more mm-hmm. here from Jacob. Jacob did point out mm-hmm. edge and Rollins being an incredible match, being insanely stoked, incredibly stoked for Xavier Woods, who is the new king yes. of the ring. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, surprised that Goldberg's back, which yes, we all are all always surprised all that he's us. back. But yeah. I think the mm-hmm. key point really women are the selling point was the big, big thing that I took away from this email. And we agree, Jacob. So thanks for being a listener. Thanks for tuning in and for being part of the podcast. If you want to be part of the podcast, you, yes, you listener, wrestling at Rob has a website.com. Email us. Mari, what else? Yes, you can also find us on Twitter at Wrestling Rehap Up. Um, you can use hashtag Wrestling Rehap Up to join the yes. conversation. You can also find us in the Job Has a Squadcast group, the unofficial, official, official mm-hmm. <laughs> Facebook group of the RHAP uh, wrestling patrons. Uh, <laughs> you can also uh, find our po- podcast feed wherever you get your wrestling podcast, um, just uh, wherever you get your pa- podcast. I mean, you don't all, always just have to listen to wrestling, yeah, but uh, search wrestling wrap up podcast. And of course you should be looking at our lovely faces here on YouTube. Go to Rob has a podcast on YouTube um, to find our video version of this podcast. And finally, it is about oh. that time. Uh, the month is about no. to start. Oh, so this is a perfect, perfect, perfect time to join uh the rhap patreon group just go to www.patreon.com slash rhap to become a patreon you'll get exclusive access to um uh and i think it's a exclusive podcast feed we got our patron five for five we got our patron feedback show for survivor and a lot of just bonus material and oh the i think the discord the facebook group it's so fun um go and become yeah. a patron at patreon.com slash rhap. Yeah, if you're a patron, let us know. Just I, I want I want to hear mm-hmm. from the people. That's the big thing that Bryce and Wen yes. presents has like inspired for me. We love to hear from you. Like we actually do. Like if you are actually listening to our voices, let us know that no one's uh, that no one's not listening to our voices. That would be the yes. proper way of saying it. That was mm-hmm. not the cleanest way of saying it, but we did it. Let us know. Hit us up. There you go. Twitter, uh all the places. All the I know where else, wherever else we said. <laughs> wherever we, we said. We just said it. We just said it. We're yeah. ready to dive in. Uh, we've done this intro for far too long. And mm-hmm. Mari, are we ready for our guest? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's uh, let's get that uh, introduction for our <sighs> guest here. Okay, let's do this. Making uh, her way to the podcast, hailing from New York. But I, wait, I don't wait. Hold on, Mari. When you're explaining where someone is from, I want to say mm-hmm. that she is from Michigan, but living in New yeah. York. Yeah. So would it be hailing from Michigan hailing by from way Michigan of Michigan by way of New York? So that sounds possibly right. Making her way to the <laughs> podcast, tailing from Michigan by way of Brooklyn, New York. She is the amazing, the phenomenal, the perfectly sounding, the astonishingly beautiful, giggles heard around the world, the Lisa <laughs> Barlow herself. She mm. makes Big Brother even bigger, 90 Day Fiance feel like 45 days, and Survivor Amazon feel like Zena, warrior princess, she is Maggie Morgan. Oh my goodness. How amazing. Thank you. There we go. Wow. I'm so touched. That was so much information that you, like you've done your research. You're clearly a listener to what I, what I have put out there in the RAJP verse. Thank you so much, Matt. That was lovely. Yeah. And I am burning up right now. I think part of it is yeah. that I, I'm lightheaded. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I have asthma. It's a lot to say a lot of words at one time, but mm-hmm. also we are joined by the extremely hot, extremely funny Maggie Uh-oh. Morgan here in the building. Let's go. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. I'm so excited to be here. Herself. 
Yes. yes. No tubing enthusiast. Thank you enthusiast guys for herself. having me. Yes. <laughs> we love it. So, so Maggie, tell us, like, have you heard of wrestling? Are you a fan of wrestling? Tell us what is your background when it comes to wrestling? Okay. So the first I ever, I always just thought like fighting was all the same. So I thought like mm. MMA fighting and like boxing and mm -hmm wrestling and like this is not the wrestling that clearly the people did in high school you know like yeah. i thought that they were all just like all one mm -hmm. um but i remember in high school my two guy friends loved wearing um tap out oh, tuesday no. shirts or tap out oh. shirts they would wear yeah. tap out shirts on tuesday mm -hmm. and that's wrestling right is that that's not? mma mm -hmm. that's mma oh. no so see, yeah. I I clearly don't uh, know. Well, I but, think well, I think at that time, tap out was everywhere for some reason. I think yes, yeah. and John Cena used to promote it, right? No, yeah. a lot of wrestlers have like worn wrestling tap out. Game? I, think I mean, they, they okay. sponsored. It's a brand. I'm sorry. It was yeah, a brand. no, Maggie, yeah. Maggie, you're on. You're on. You're you know what you're talking about. I know John <laughs> Cena. I know The Rock. Yeah, I know right. Eva Marie, Natalie Eva oh. Marie, who was on oh, yeah. Big Brother Celebrity. Big Brother? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, and also when I was in college, there was a guy in my college program who oh. wanted to be a pro wrestler who was like oh. in the acting program to try to nice, like huh. develop his ability. Mm -hmm. So I think that like that, that is my whole background with it, but I'm not like somebody <laughs> who loves violence. So mm -hmm. I was really worried before I opened up the playlist today. I was like, what am I walking into? What am I watching? And there was definitely some stuff where I was like, oh my God, that we can get into. <laughs> but there, I feel like so much of it is just performing. Like I can yeah. completely understand why a lot of these pro wrestlers have forayed into acting careers that are mm -hmm. like very successful because mm -hmm. they're acting. Like this yep. is just all performance exactly. and not in the way that any other like professional sport is a performance like obviously mm -hmm. they're like you know there's a level of showmanship if you're like a football player but not like this like exactly. i feel like 90 percent of what you're doing is being a showman on on in these matches that i watch exactly yeah and a lot of yeah. what you're talking about like even mentioning um like the showmanship that's involved with football like a lot of this other showmanship in other sports was inspired by people's love of wrestling. So mm, like yes, the ability exactly. to like get on the mic, like Muhammad Ali, I think is a great example. Yep, I believe perfect. being inspired. I want mm, this is gorgeous. This George. Feel right. Yeah. No, oh, gorgeous. Yeah, George. Exactly. Uh -huh. So Muhammad Ali, like known for, for everything he did on the mic, in addition to obviously in the boxing ring, like was inspired by gorgeous George, a wrestler. Mm -hmm. So it's like, wrestling has inspired so much of culture and the performance per, um, I don't say performative but like the performance aspects of it all and so you know you have something there Maggie yeah. I mean you could be a great pro I would wrestler. die I would uh, die I mean like I watched a girl literally get shoved off of the top of a ladder into another ladder like and yet, I would break every bone in my body <laughs> yeah that was yeah that was Just a hard one stretch a little bit You'll be and how funny I don't think that that will save me <laughs> How funny would it have been like Maggie's like, yeah, there was a guy who was in my acting class. He said yeah. he wanted to be a wrestler. I don't know. His name was Roman Reigns or something. Like, or like uh, John that? Cena. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> He's like a uh, uh, Dean Ambrose. I don't know. Some, Wait, some name. Like, yeah, like just to go funny. back to this because I was I was going to let it slide. So mm -hmm. did this person ever become a pro wrestler, Maggie? I don't think so. I don't think they're <laughs> a pro wrestler. <laughs> It's not better yeah, like it. in the future. Yeah. <laughs> we'll 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 follow up on this later. If you find any yeah. information, let us know. Hey, their we'll their on. wrestling name was Karn. K-A-H-R-N. <laughs> oh well, that's probably the first well, problem. It's very why? hard to spell. I, I, <laughs> look, I don't claim to have the answers about Karn. Okay. Hmm. This is just my only experience with it. But he like oh. I, okay, I have a question. For huh. you guys about Wait, did you find something i oh, don't sorry. know if i did or not karn sorry, alex is this someone named yes, cody yes, alex yes. <gasps> oh yes. my god okay wait so code let's we're gonna pause so quick hot second cody alexander uh is an american pro wrestler known as karn alexander 
he does look like a pro wrestler. Yeah, I mean, he looked like a pro wrestler when we met him. I was like, oh my gosh, this oh, man! Look at is- him. Look at yeah, look at him. Um, uh, debuted in two thousand. What? Ma- yeah, Maggie. Well, Maggie might out. actually. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I I don't know if he is like uh, like he's not on like Raw. No. And he's currently he like getting like his him. MFA in acting. No. So he's like pursuing still his acting degree. But I wow. think that all of his wrestling stuff he did before he I ever met him. His interests include acting and entertaining, animation, and underground rap. We, we oh well. rap is in wrestling a lot. Mm-hmm. Maybe beat, maybe, be, maybe my I didn't know that he liked myself, underground or, rap. You know. He's a very lovely guy. I was in a play with him. He's he's very talented. Um, yeah. but he just like I, I think that his like, I don't want to seem like I was being shady that I was like, I don't think he's a pro wrestler just because like, I don't think he's on raw. Like, I don't know what yeah. that means. No, you know, he like not he's not on, raw. he's not in these clips <laughs> and I know yeah. he's still pursuing his acting degree. So like, you're like, like, a wrestler you're like before. Maggie, this is like the most like, um, parent comment. that's like, Oh, you're a, you're an actor, but you're not on Saturday night live. Okay. Right. Or you're yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> yes. Like the parent comment. Of, like, I, I mean like totally, which I hate obviously. Cause like that happens to me all the time. So I feel bad. I just did it to Karn, yeah. but no, um, fine. he's okay. Shout out to Karn retired. Alexander. Uh, yeah, indie, indie Cody. Shows, book him book. if he's still, uh, wrestling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Book him. Yeah, Hook shout him. out to him. That is so that. funny. We learned a lot today. Yes. Didn't know I'm co- sorry, Maggie. You said Maggie's... you had questions. Yeah, Maggie. Oh, okay. So my, yeah, my question is how, well, I don't know if this might be controversial to ask this no. question, oh. but oh. Um, how much of this is like fight choreography that they've worked out beforehand for safety Basi- reasons? Basically... Okay, so there's a long answer, but what I'll give you is the shorter answer, which is that basically all of it's worked out beforehand. Uh-huh. Like, so there's something called um, like calling a match. Like when you're in the middle of the match, like sometimes the wrestlers will in real time like determine what they're going to do next in the match. Mm-hmm. My understanding, and I don't know how much we talked about this, Mari, this year, but they moved to doing more of the like let's co- plan out the matches beforehand. And have those figure out so that it's not as like let the wrestlers so decide in the ring. Is it like they talk about it beforehand or they get in the ring in plain clothes and go through it and practice like with one another for safety reasons? Because no, I'm just watching. Okay, I'm watching like some of the most dangerous sh- crap I've ever seen. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, clearly <laughs> like. Uh, the punching is fake, you know, like these are, you know, like these are clearly like stage combat that we're doing, yeah. but punches. it's like very, very dangerous stage combat. And yes. I'm just thinking like in the acting world, if you have any sort of stage combat on stage every single night before the show, you do a fight call and you go over it. Like every single night you, if you're mm. using weapons of any kind, you go over it. So I'm like, I cannot believe that they do not for safety purposes, like, like, how do they not break their legs and break, well, knock out teeth and stuff like, all the time? So the, they're re- they're really good wrestlers. These so most yeah. of these wrestlers have been wrestling for fifteen years, ten years, however mm-hmm. many years. So three years. you don't <laughs> three years, right? Some of them, <laughs> depending. Yes, yeah, some of them. Um, so you don't have to get in there and actually do the match. Like, um, mm-hmm. very often, like if somebody were to do that it would normally be like the the thing that comes to my mind matt tell me if you remember this but when the undertaker when the undertaker and um who was it uh sean michael i can't remember but the the um paul bearer cement truck um stuff that they were yeah and they act that was the one where they actually had to um film it and practice it they practiced it, yeah, because um, it was a big stunt where the Undertaker was about to bury uh, Paul Bearer in um, a cement, like in a cement truck. So they ha- they practiced it beforehand, but because they practiced it beforehand, somebody caught it on video and it was leaked. So mm. very rarely do they actually practice it, like at least in the ring um, beforehand. But it really just depends on the performers. So, so some okay. of the performers, if they're re- if they're like greener if they haven't been performing as long they might right. ask to work mm-hmm. at least work on some moves they wwe has full wrestling rings in the back wherever they go mm-hmm. so that they can work on some stuff but I, I i don't really think that they're going 
well, I know that they're not doing match, like the whole match, planning it out. Mm -hmm. What they normally do is, this is such a long-winded answer. What they no, this totally is what I'm asking. Do is yeah. for, they have live shows, like they have live shows. Um, so Raw, SmackDown, NXT, those are the, the televised live shows. But mm -hmm. in between those shows, they, they go to different cities and then they perform in front of a crowd. And what so they'll they do is... Yeah. yeah, yeah, they work out the kinks, the and and mm -hmm. yeah, and that makes sense too. Just in in the sense of like um, the because I was like, yeah, like they're great wrestlers. They're like the best at what they do, absolutely. But like sometimes you just like just jive with someone, or like they yes, are maybe totally. going a bit too rough, and you totally. feel vaguely unsafe. Like I can't imagine like somebody sort of like you don't hear what they're calling. So then you just suddenly have an elbow to the shoulder and you <laughs> no. didn't realize that that was going to happen to properly, you know, shift your weight in whatever mm. you needed to do. So that's why like these people yeah. are amazing. amazing. They're physical they're, specimens. Yeah. They're yeah. like, it, it's wild what they do. This is like the hardest stuff ever. Yeah. And it's like, it's, uh, I think what's awesome about it too, is just like you, well, we're going to get into the, get into it and the details as mm -hmm. we go along, but like literally like even the example you gave, like, I'm sure that there's a stray, like hit to mm -hmm. the, the chest or whatever. It's like, that's base. That's the basic stuff. Like I'm sure that yeah. happens all the time in a match and you just kind of get used to getting hit even accidentally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it is really impressive. And that's why we don't, it is. that's why Mari and I don't do it yet, even though <laughs> we might, we might have to hop in the ring with, um, with your tag team partner, Jacob and yep. Hey, if you, hopefully you don't get in on this, like stay out of the match, Maggie. I, um, when I tell you, I will never be anywhere close to a wrestling ring. I mean, <laughs> I can't even but, do a somersault. You have to do like 17 backflips around. Believe in yourself. I believe in I, yourself. I believe in myself to a point. I'm a realist, all right? And, and I just want to say thank you so much, Maggie, for respecting the art. And I, yes. I, I just want to say I loved all the guests we've had on this season so far. It's been like a ladies' night themed season. We've had so many wonderful women on, um, and a good portion of them do have a, uh, acting backgrounds. And, and it's yeah. just so, so funny how you can easily see the art and the hard work it takes um, to do this. And we really do appreciate you uh, seeing that. Yeah. Of course. And, and I think that it's easier for me, like watching something like this than it would be to watch like a real MMA fight. Oh yeah. Like I, I, like I said, I don't like violence. So like, this is like a show, like I'm yes. watching a show, you know, and like, exactly. sure. Maybe people end up getting like punched or like thrown around a little bit, but like, I know that everybody's going to be able to get up and walk away and like be okay at the end. Exactly. But like, I have no interest in watch somebody try and knock out each other's teeth with like blood on the floor. Like that is I way too either. much for me. I can't do like, it. That's I, a I, lot. I never like MMA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Boxing. I can like, kind of, I can, boxing is kind of fine because it's not like, it doesn't seem like the aim is blood <laughs> when it comes to boxing. If it happens, yeah. it happens. Doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem <laughs> like it. it yeah. <laughs> Until it happens. Yeah. So. But yeah. yeah, that is so true. Uh, so um, let's let's move on. Let's get into these highlights of the week. I'm so excited ooh. to hear your thoughts, Maggie. Um, so uh, each week we go over the wrestling highlights of the week, week from different brands. This week we'll be going over Raw, NXT, and SmackDown. So let's start. If you wanna, um, if you wanna see us bring up pictures, you can jump o jump on over to the YouTube page so you can see us bring up pictures. And we're gonna start with uh, Biggie. Biggie open Raw. Um, talking about uh, he did a really good job here thanking basically thanking Drew um, for a good match or crown jewel talking about how he wants to be a fighting champion and it looks like he um, he's talking about the influx of talent from Smackdown to Raw so uh, I, it wasn't an open challenge that he issued but he was definitely like looking for his next challenger and so of course in true WWE fashion um, <laughs> Seth Rollins comes out first Acts like he didn't get beat at Crown Jewel by Edge, but it's okay. It's whatever. He's a heel. He can be delusional. Um, uh, yeah. He comes and out. On, uh -huh. on yeah. this note, by the way, I just want to point out, and this is something that I don't know how much we've talked about. Why does everyone have a dance, Mari? Everyone has some choreography. Like Seth little, Rollins had his God little here, choreography yeah. on mm -hmm. the way out. Biggie was dancing along to it. Like, we love that. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, not the most wrestling thing. 
you know, but it was a good, it was a good. Speaking of which, real oh. quick, I don't know if we talked about this, but they, they changed his music. They changed Seth's music. It was really oh. interesting. They kind of mashed the, the Monday Night Messiah music with the Burn It Down and his original music, the original, didn't, didn't, didn't. like, it's a very interesting mix. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty good. It was just like very, I was like, oh, wait away like it was, it was really they try to put all three of them in there so mm. i found that very very we like a good mashup we like yeah a good we do mashup. shout out um, to the dj, DJ and then we I don't know who. and then we got ray mysterio beloved beloved luchador the gloat the greatest luchador of all time come mm. out um he said he wanted a shot of course finn balor comes out because finn balor wants a shot and then finally, Kevin Owens comes out because this is how this happens. This is how this always happens when we're looking for a, con a number one contender. Everybody comes out with their mics and their microphones and their promos, which is really good. All of them are really good. Very much running down their resumes as to why they should be the number one contender. And of course, it gets turned into a, a fatal four-way ladder match, which oh, I love oh. a good ladder match. We all talk oh, about I this. I, Mari, mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't like the ladder stuff. I was just. I was a bit disturbed imagine. by the ladder stuff. If I'm I being honest, imagine. like I, you want to work. I. Yeah. I just was okay. So imagine me mm -hmm. never yeah. seeing a single wrestling match in my whole life. <laughs> Maggie Morgan. This yeah. is the first clip that I see. Yes, it and is. I'm like, oh, literally, my notes are literally just like. Oh my god! They just start fighting in the ring with their fists. They just punch each other. Oh, then now they're outside of the ring. What is happening with this ladder? Like they're literally. They, he pulls out a, a table the size of Thanksgiving dinner and just starts like. Yep. But like mm -hmm. it, it just got so intense in a way where mm -hmm. I was like, "This is a good cartoon." Like you yeah. know how when a, in cartoons they just like suddenly like pull out things from nowhere and like start hitting yeah. people with them. <laughs> like that's how I felt. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And I I gathered after watching all of the clips that like. The ladder thing is whoever can reach the belt at the top of the ladder first yeah. gets to wins and gets to do it. But like, I just thought it was so funny. How like all of the, the formula for all of these matches clearly is that somebody comes out, talks a bunch of crap is like, yeah. I need a challenger. Then mm -hmm. like, whoa, how crazy somebody comes out and challenges them and they just happen to have all of their artwork ready to put project on the big screen. And then they come in and then they like talk a little crap and then maybe somebody else will come in and talk a little crap and then they all start battling. Yep. And mm -hmm. like there's never really like for whatever reason, I thought there would be like the ding ding to start. Nope. We just whoever throws a punch, then we're, we're off to the races. So <laughs> yeah. that's why the latter thing I was just like, this is so intense mm -hmm. off the bat immediately and like i thought that there would be more um i didn't realize it would be so free flowing free form if that makes sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah they yeah. they do eventually ring the bell you probably just don't hear it because you're looking at people walloping each other but mm -hmm. yeah the, the, ladder, the ladder matches are like train wrecks and that's why i love them especially in experienced hands like kevin owens is so good at ladder matches him and seth rollins um all, all of the people in that ladder match are really good. I mean, Finn Balor has had a, um, an amazing ladder match with uh, Samoa Joe before. So, like, when you have those people who you know are going to, um, you know, provide a great match, and that mm -hmm. match was really good, it, it's always so great to watch. I love a, love a good uh, ladder match. Um, Seth Rollins, they had a, they had a contract um, hanging from the top, which was interesting. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, which makes sense I mean, because they if, needed if, something. They need hanging. something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they need something, but it's very you don't see that that often. But you know Seth what? Rollins Actually, it. I, mm -hmm. I just want to point out, like in in the storyline, it was a contract. In yeah. reality, it was just a WWE pad folio. Like right. there was no contract. <laughs> I'm sure. A very nice <laughs> make pad a folio. Yeah, actually. very nice pad folio. I would like one. Yes, please. I would yeah. too, actually. Swag. WWE can, send it away. Yeah. Can I say something that might be controversial Offensive? and yet brave? Yeah, we love Will it. it. We'll, we'll edit see. it out totally. I th I think Seth Rollins <laughs> looks like Paul from Big Brother 19. Oh my gosh. Oh. The vibe Wait. was there. 
Okay. We can get the vibe. I mean, there's some vibes. I can catch that vibe. Yeah. I mean, yeah, especially they, they like all had the long hair, hair and the, mm-hmm. the, yes. the beard. Yes. And I will say. A very obnoxious I mean, the- laugh. Okay. Yeah, she like I'm super can. obnoxious. The um the vibe off of like the outfit, I thought. No. Like the, yeah. he was like the white fur coat. Oh felt God. like a very yeah. Paul outfit. Yeah. Yes. yeah. We love I am seeing this, outfit. Maggie. That is such a great point. Me too. Matt is you not seeing it. Matt no, I do. Big. I see. I lo- this picture that we're staring at. I see a lot of. I, I'm getting like a lot. I'm get, I'm taking in the pad folio for the most part, to be honest. <laughs> um, but I, in my mind, in my my mind's eye, sees it. It's a good. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of comparisons like this, though. I yeah. feel like with different wrestlers, and I appreciate them because we stare at these people so much, and we've also like mm-hmm. Seth Rollins didn't always quite look like this. Like he wasn't always as scruffified and yeah, scruffified. um just raw you know but, and like ch- leopard printy but you know even past the looks though they both do have that type of like personality where you either like them or you don't like you know what i'm saying yeah um, that's why um, I, I seemed that. obnoxious yeah really obnoxious yeah that's me. what he's supposed to be yeah he's supposed mm-hmm. to be a heel a very obnoxious <laughs> annoying maybe heel. seth is a paul fan who knows? And I mean, if, for me, BB-19, Paul was <laughs> exactly that. The worst. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So great point there, Maggie. But yes. Yeah, I love this. This was such a great match. I'm so excited uh, for Seth Rollins versus Big E. Um, we'll see how, how this goes. If he gets a win over Seth Rollins, Ooh. that could be really great for, for, for Big E. Um, but we'll see how long his title reign is, is going to be. Any final thoughts, anybody for uh, Big E and, and Seth Rollins and the rest of the challengers here? No, just like what a match for me to come into with I wrestling. Know. I was yeah. like, what is happening? You know, it I felt kind like, of, um, yeah. Okay. I don't know if this is an apt <laughs> comparison to make. Okay. It is. Have you guys ever played Super Smash Brothers Melee? Yeah. Yeah. It felt very Super Smash Brothers Melee to me. Yeah, like everybody uh-huh. was just like going at it, and it was mm-hmm. very quick yeah. and like very intense. And I was like, "Oh my goodness!" And like mm-hmm. I said, like sometimes with Super Smash Brothers, they have these random items that you're like, "Why? Why do they yeah. have that frying pan that they're using?" Yeah. <laughs> and like that is what was happening. I felt I was like, "Wow, this is very." Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, and you kind of I- lucked out because most of these clips are kind of. <laughs> Like, yes, you know, that's, not that's that. why I'm saying. <laughs> like that's why I'm saying. I I think I'm drawing these comparisons. But. Yeah, no, and it was it was wild because you had like ladders, people hitting each other with ladders. You had people mm-hmm. who took ladders and then propelled themselves onto their opponents with those ladders. You had people going yeah. through tables. You had people being thrown onto ladders on the outside of the ring. And my biggest thought with all of this actually is I kind of felt like, you know, we know it's Halloween season. Yeah, um, I felt season. like it was sort of like... Um, between this ladder match and then later in the week when we saw a ladder match, that one kind of like showing up to intense. Halloween. It's kind of like showing up to a Halloween a Halloween party and like wearing the same costume as someone else. Like <laughs> I found myself comparing the different ladder matches mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and just feeling like there needs to be like a little bit more coordination. Like let you know maybe they'll do a tables match where we just see a ton of people getting hit with and I thrown hate tables, tables matches. I. Do, I do too, actually. But yeah, I'm like, why would you, you know, suggest that? <laughs> it's like anything that's like different. It's nice to have like yeah. the. I, th- I feel like this is not the only type of match we saw um, repeated twice this week between no, the we NXT did it. show and <laughs> yep. SmackDown later on too. So interesting times. Coordination yeah. though would be nice. <laughs> it's like it is weird though, Maggie. Just because Mari and I were talking about this um, in September, there was a pay per view called Extreme Rules. The idea is that the matches would be like ladder matches and hardcore matches. They did, there was literally like one um, match with mm. weapons. So it's wild that we're getting so many of them. This there were week. a lot of weapons. Like, I felt like everybody weapons. had a weapon. And okay, yeah. <laughs> this is my, again, I'm, th- I'm just thinking about like safety. Like, I'm thinking practically about how they do yeah. this just because I'm an actor. So, like, I'm going to want, like, and they are giving performances here. So I'm like, are the ladders real ladders? 
Or are they like special wrestling ladders that are like made of softer material? Like maybe it's not real metal. Mm. Maybe it's softer metal. Like that, like maybe the, you know, the queen Zelina's staff that she hit her with, like has some give to it. So it's not like she's just hitting her with a, you know what I mean? Yeah. Are they like specialized and, weapons. And a lot of it too is even about Mari. I think it would, I think you're about to probably say something about the weapons themselves, but even just like how people are getting hit with the weapons like Mm -hmm. you'll notice like with the staff and the example you're giving which we'll get to like it's like putting your hands up or like you know you're not taking a hit to the face with the ladder Mm -hmm. because that's Mm -hmm. not good even if it's a little bit like gimmicked as they say or not yeah fully real but mari exactly no oh oh, yeah no you're right like uh the the it's it's also (laughs) it's the material that the stuff is made out of yes uh, it's definitely like a looser metal. I don't know. I can never really completely figure out some of the ladder matches. I couldn't figure out if like some of the ladders were real, which might be the ones that you they're using to stand up. While there's some mm-hmm. of them that you use to hit or might just be a little bit lighter. But I, I mm-hmm. always know uh, I love when they bring out the trash cans because I don't think we saw any trash cans. But the trash cans are made out of like those aluminum foil pans that you get for Thanksgiving that you can mm-hmm. just like hit. Those are really fun. Yeah. So yeah. So um, it's the material. But like Matt said, it's also how you strike your yeah opponent. like absolutely it's, it's both yes. the the aid and the, the safety of it yes so let's move on to the uh becky and bianca promo it's so funny because i think last week matt most of the clips we gave uh geneva and kelsey were all promos and this week it's all action <laughs> like it's like it's like flipped for maggie yeah I know. um but uh so this is where we we got becky came out um this was again. So last week, we we talked about how Becky and Charlotte had they exchanged their titles, and there's a whole bunch of heat. The you know it came out that Becky and Charlotte does not how they were supposed to exchange the titles, um, that they were mad at each other, all of this good stuff. Becky comes out, she kind of addresses it. Yeah, Matt, you were about to say something? No, no. It, I'm, just, it, I'm just I'm just I'm just like. It was such a mess last week. Like, Maggie, yes, it was. It was yeah. a mess, um, and there was just lots of like the blend. The line between real and not real was really blurred, and there were some yeah. people. Charlotte, um, Charlotte Flair, yeah. daughter of Ric Flair, <laughs> who was not happy to say mm-hmm. the least. Um, allegedly, allegedly. Um, but maybe confirmed, but allegedly escorted out of the building, like after her segment on the show. Mm -hmm. Um, So like that just gives a gist of it. And there was a lot of news about what was going on with her, what was wrong. Yeah. But back to the studio, Mari. (laughs) And so Becky comes out. It Like I didn't like this promo exchange here, mostly for the content. The women themselves did a great job. Like, uh, Becky and Bianca did a great job, but I didn't like the content. First and foremost, um, when when Bianca comes out and Bianca starts addressing Becky, um, the stuff that she's saying to Becky just does not relate to Becky. So a lot of this sounded like to me, WWE will do this where they're dressing down a talent in front of the audience, but it's not. it might not be the talent that's in the ring. It huh. sounded like, yeah, maybe I maybe it's just because of the you know the knowledge of all of the stuff that happened between the Becky and Charlotte stuff. But yeah. both of these promos together, Becky and Bianca, even though they were talking to each other, it really sounded like they were like sending a message to Charlotte. Um, especially with Bianca telling Becky like she needs the title, she's nothing without the title, which is just clearly not true. Like Becky Lynch. Right. I mean, Becky Lynch hasn't hasn't not held a title for like two years. Like, you know, she she's she's held a title for a year before she left. She left for um, a year and a half, came back and immediately won the title. So technically, she has not been titleless for title less for two and a half years. But Becky, Becky clearly doesn't need a title. She's one of the most over people in the whole industry. Um, I've clearly said on this this podcast several times that if we're going to uh say that about anybody it would be charlotte and charlotte's whole character is based on holding titles and how many titles and we'll see that later on in smackdown um literally so i just didn't like i mean i didn't like this um also we've we've had these type of promos between the two of them for the past month now 
So nothing moved the needle here. It was was just for them to both to come out and pop the crowd and everything like that. And at the end, they didn't even announce while they were out there. They ended up announcing it later. Bianca and Becky will be, will have a women's uh, raw women's title match next week on raw, which I am not even excited for (laughs) because, um, if if you don't put this title on Bianca, that would be how, how many matches is that, Matt? That'd be at least like four title matches that she she would now have lost. Um, of course, they have been trying to protect her by using either like triple threats or um uh, or uh, uh what's it called um people interfering and stuff yeah, like that and disqual- yeah. oh, disqualifications like they've been very much protecting Bianca and I like that up to a point but now if we're just getting Bianca versus Becky Lynch one on one next week and there's no Sasha or no Charlotte to interfere it literally is a straight up match which is what Bianca wants because Bianca says Becky has not beat her in a straight up match which is true um then if you don't put the title on Bianca here, what does she do next? So my thought process is Ugh. either Bianca needs to win this title, which I don't think that's really in the plans, or she needs to not make it to the ring. Like I would much rather like Becky or somebody like beat her up beforehand and not like the the match not happen. I'm perfectly okay when people when the WWE or people announce matches and then somehow they K it to the match doesn't happen. I know that hurts for the people who paid to be in attendance, but I, I just don't want to see Bianca take a, a another loss j- uh, just for her to, I guess, get to the back of the line because B- Becky did say get to the back of the line, bitch. But anyways, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> Matt, what did you think first? Okay, I just I just want to add to what you're saying in that I am more I'm not op- optimistic is not it, but I want to I want to leave more room for when they have that match and then it has like a screwy finish and then, you know, they, the feud continues. Like, I don't know what they're going to do. I'm with you. I don't see Bianca winning next week because mm-hmm. there's not, hasn't really been the build to that and it would just feel like strange timing, but you know what? Um, I, I, I don't know where this is going. It is kind of strange. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they have been doing a lot to protect Bianca and make her look good. Like the I I I'll call it an eye-ish break to Bianca mm-hmm. that happened um at the end of the this segment, segment from Becky. And mm-hmm. you know, that's another thing. But it's just like at some point, if you can't figure out how to not get cheated and you keep getting cheated, you do kind of look a little bit foolish. Yes. Like exactly. even if it's cheating that's involved. And so exactly. The how, one thing how, how that Bianca Bianca. The one thing that Bianca has going for her is Becky. She's never hit Becky with a KOD and been able to capitalize on it. Her and that's finishing her move, which yeah. she was attempting uh, when she got her eyes raked. So we're going to get that moment, though, Mari, where Bianca yeah. does hit it and wins. That's what we're building toward, it seems like. I mean, maybe we'll see Bianca hit it next week and then mm-hmm. get screwed out of the championship. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Maggie, I know Maybe that Maggie I, we just laid a whole bunch of history here on you, <laughs> but just from just yes. watching that, the clip we sent you, what did you think? Um, I will read my notes. Please. Bianca's hair with the jewels look fierce. Yeah. Um, Dazzle. Uh, she says, get, or Becky says, get to the back of the line, bitch. And Bianca mm-hmm. just starts beating the shit out of her. <laughs> a stick has appeared. <laughs> oh, I guess Becky's running away. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> I mean, that's basically it. Very apt. Very apt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Like, this is the week of the weapons, isn't it? Like so far, if we just, you know what? I feel like I need like a list of inventory. Like, okay, two there you tables, go, please. Two tables, 13 ladders, um, one ladders. kendo stick. Uh, At okay, least seven it, kendo it, sticks. It. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine being with like the costume or props department? Like, okay, we need to, we, we got to buy like seven tables. Uh, three people are going to go through them. Like they just have to go through the laundry list. No. What would your face have been if they said, we need candy corn painted kendo sticks? (laughs) Because we saw those later on. That was an intern. An intern definitely Uh, had to do that. It's always going to be an intern, I'm sure. 
Right. Like, so, what? yes. So this was, this Ridiculous. was, yeah, we'll see what happens next week. We'll come back. We might complain. I, I just, like, to me, at this point, that's why, I'm like, even a screwy finish would not be satisfying to me. Because we've seen that so many times at this point. But okay. Uh, so next up. Times. <laughs> I know. Next up, we got uh, Queen Zelina makes her first royal proclamation. <sighs> my, <laughs> my favorite segment of the show, I just have to well, say. Do you mind walking us through it, Matt? Oh, my, me? Yeah, look there you go. Here are the yeah, keys. So, oh, look. Oh, oh, I have the keys. <laughs> oh, the keys. Mari gave me the keys. <laughs> to quote Jacob Jones. <laughs> I'm going to take them back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, I have the keys. So we had the coronation of Queen Zelina Vega, who won mm -hmm. the Queen's Crown Tournament last week at Crown Jewel. And Zelina was, was really coming out. We didn't get her throne moment last week. This is the first we're getting of it. So yeah. what was really awesome with this was just the way that she commanded the room, the royalty ship. Selena walks out to the ring. I believe the announcer, I want to say it's Mike Rome on the Mike announcement, mm -hmm. um, you know, at the beginning introduces her. She gets out to the ring. And this was not included in the YouTube clip, but she promptly corrects Mike Rome and tells mm -hmm. him to introduce her properly. And so we got a more full introduction, uh, recognizing Selena as the first official queen of mm -hmm. the WWE, which is kind of like the, the angle that they're going with. And over the mm -hmm. course of the next uh, several minutes, we proceed to see Zelina mix. I don't know if it's like a Brooklyn kind of accent with a British accent, but whatever it is, yeah. I, I loved it. <laughs> She's going in and out of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, that was funny. I have I, I'm very curious to hear Maggie's thoughts, especially from like the acting perspective of what we saw here. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I don't know if you're like big on accents, if that's like your thing on your um your IMDB page or what, <laughs> but like spill, you're the expert here. You're the theatrical um... genius. Yeah, I just wrote that uh, I've gathered that at the beginning of the matches. Yes. The, pe the person comes out and gives a big old monologue about how they're mm -hmm. the best. And then yes. someone comes out to beat them up. <laughs> and yeah. so like, that's, you know, I like she came out this. and she yeah. had the whole thing and then Dewdrop appeared mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Dewdrop appeared. And I was like, Oh my God, this woman is literally like a foot and a half taller than yeah. Queen Zelina. <laughs> And yeah. like, are there weight classes in, in wrestling? Like no, what is happening? No, like I was about to say, mm -hmm. clearly not, not because then a lot of the men's matches that we saw later, it was like the same vibe happening. Yeah. Um, and I thought that it was fun. I thought that her performance skills were better in the ring. Mm -hmm. um, there we go. Yeah. But then it, then it was when she was just talking. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I thought that, it, I thought that it, the whole thing was really fun and, and like, mm -hmm. you know, Dewdrop was throwing her around like a little rag doll. And, yes. and then she grabbed her hair and like fake begged for mercy and then like did the bait and switch and, and like got her. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was fun. Yeah, it's just good. Uh, we'll see what Queen Zelina's reign brings. Um, Dewdrop was who she beat like, for the crown. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. Look at how high in the air she is. Yeah. Yes. And her whole body is going <laughs> to slam on the ground. What yeah. on earth? This yes. is insane to yeah. me. And shout out to the WWE photographers for capturing this uh, amazing action, which you could watch only on, well, I guess you could see these pictures in a lot of places, but definitely on our YouTube right now. Mm -hmm. um, and But yeah, it, th this is one thing I, I appreciated. Um, even just the size difference, like WWE putting these two against each other is so notable because you kind of have like, Zelina as this more squirrely heel character and then do drop as this powerhouse. And mm -hmm. I don't understand. I, I like, I, I love that Zelina's in this spot because she has not been highlighted, especially as a singles performer, like ever truly in her time in WWE. And so I love that she has this spot. Um, I want to see more of the promos and segments and more matches like this where she gets beat up, but then somehow manages to Same. win. Um, 
Yes, yes. But she used her smarts, right? right? That's what I gathered. Like she outsmarted yeah. her rather than like beat her. Clearly, I mean, she's double her size. There's no way she can just yeah. like power at, power it out and beat her. So she like used her smarts, which yeah is what a good queen should do. And it's a it's a very much heel tactics. Like she like used. Yeah. Bad guy, bad guy tactics, basically. Um, yeah. So yeah, it, and and it'll it'll be very interesting to see how her reign goes because again, like I would I'd say, um, her and Dewdrop, they they were the ones in the finals for the Queen's Crowd, mm. so they kind of just ran this back to I think just to, you know, fill in some time here, um, and to st- and to like Maggie's, um, what Maggie said uh, to show how how Zelina is gonna you know, um, pull out these wins. So I, the rosters are so fresh. I can't even remember who's on. I think Liv Morgan. Oh, Liv Morgan and Carmella did have a, um, a match this on raw, but I did not. They've, this is like their 80th match. So I decided not to talk about it. Like, yeah, Liv's very pretty. Yeah. But (laughs) <laughs> and, I mean, and and Carmella has her mask, and also pretty, but with the mask on too. Yeah, I mm-hmm. just need them to separate. I need them to separate. I need it. I need to get some more storylines in here because it, it's not happening. Um, and uh, before she we leave it. Raw, I just want to quickly talk about we did have a um, we had a triple threat match to find the number one contender for the Raw Tag Team Championships uh, between the Street Profits, the Dirty Dogs, and Alpha Academy. Um, so the dirty dogs won, and then the dirty dogs uh, went up against RK Bro for the the tag team championship belts, and of course, RK Bro retained. So, I mean, I don't, it was, I mean, okay, like, yeah. <laughs> I think RK Bro, RK, uh... right? Like, I think RK Bro is gonna <laughs> keep the title for a, a while because, um, you know, Randy Orton is very over, um. He it looks like he's having fun with Matt Riddle, so uh, I think they're going to keep it for a while. I didn't understand what was the point of the first match and all that. No, and yeah, but anyway, so to waste our time, maybe it exactly, exactly. Unless Maggie, did you have any any comments about the that the triple threat the tag? No, I just match? wrote that I thought it was beautiful fight choreography. Like they yes. are what they do was. I mean, I thought by far the the most succinct like i felt like watching Mm -hmm. it was like triple the speed of a lot of the other matches like they were they just like know what they're doing it was amazing yeah and a a lot of the story of even how this match was like pulled together was like the uh, almost just the dynamic of the triple tag team match very much came through. So you have like mm-hmm. only two people from two of the teams in the ring, but then you have another Which team who has both their members on the outside. And so they don't want to like, they want to make sure that they're not like, I don't know. It's just so fun to see it, the dynamic. I And then you had the two teams, Alpha Academy and Dirty Dogs, who were kind of working against the Street Profits the whole time. Um, mm-hmm. I always mess up how I say his name, but um, um, Amas, Amas, who's oh, yeah. the big man oh, who Amas. came in and yeah. interfered. I I don't even, I still don't, I still can't, Mari. Omis or is it? Oh, oh, uh, I think it's met- Omis. Omis. I'm trying. I think it's Omis. Yeah. I think it's yeah, Omis he- too. Yeah, he Damn interfered it. with the street profits, right? <laughs> it's been like I don't almost the whole year. Yeah, but he it did interfere and he attacked and they won the match. And he's big, and I don't really know what that was all about, to be honest. Right, exactly. So it's fine. It's okay. All right. There's a tag it's team. Cool. We move on. Apparently. I do want to point out something <laughs> else just because it did it was really trippy for me uh when I watched the show, and then even as I watched the clips again, which was that um for whatever reason. Uh, nobody cares about this, but uh, Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode, they changed tights. They changed clothes. They were wearing they black. They were wearing black at first, and then they were wearing green later in the show. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, I didn't know. Why did they at do all? that? I know. I don't I, have, know. I don't, I, I don't want to talk about it, but I just want to point it out because I'm That's like, That's very what? interesting. That, do- that never happens. Change- yeah. Maybe they, like, tore their tights or something, or, you know, in the first match. Ew. Yeah. Who cares? It happens. All right. That's it for the raw highlights of the week. Um, all yes. the highlights can um, be found in a very handy playlist playlist in the bottom of our show notes. A handy dandy playlist. A handy dandy playlist. Uh, let's move on to NXT because NXT had their like um, 
They, it was like a. Uh, it was a. I don't like even a know. Special. I call yeah. it like a special. Let's call it a special. A special, right? Exactly, because it wasn't a takeover. No. Um. So yeah. So it was a special. It was a Halloween Havoc special. Um. Uh. This was a pretty good. This was a a a, a good show. Like the show was pretty good. Um. The card was pretty good. We got a lot of different champions, uh, but yeah, yeah. It, was, it was hard for me to watch a little bit. Wow! I'm, Wait, I'm not. A, I'm just. Those? I'm just not a fan of Chucky, and he was just all up and down that card, <laughs> and it's <laughs> so annoying to me. Thank you. I just wanted to stop on that, um, Chucky. Nobody sent for you. We didn't want you on the show. <laughs> yeah. You are creepy. You are a creepster. We don't care what your choice is. If you get a, yes. a, a like, who made up a Chuck? What? <laughs> How much so Chucky please get don't to pull be any here? of those those pictures up there, Matt. Because no, I I'm not. not and I, if there's a picture, <laughs> uh, if there's a picture of Chucky, I might have to pull it up. Um, Do not pull it up. I was a little creeped out. All right, so let's talk about let's um, keep going. the main the the main headline of the show. If you're gonna grab a, yeah. a, a headline, Toxic Attraction. So Toxic Attraction. <laughs> The group led oh, by Mandy what Rose. A name. <laughs> Maggie. Yes. I, I, I'm I'm sorry. This is what I have been waiting to talk about literally yes. the whole time. Yeah. Oh, please. Um, um they're just they're just throwing women off of the ladders. Uh yes. they they're knocking over ladders while somebody else is on top of it. Like, I have never seen anything so unsafe in my whole life. I was like, <laughs> how have they not fallen face first into a ladder and broken all of their teeth? Like this them. is just I am I'm just I was very very overwhelmed by this one. I was like what is happening here? But here's but, something I would point out that might blow your mind, Maggie. That like none of these people as far as we know walked away from this injured. I know. I know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like how is this possible that they are like <laughs> like they finished the the woman who got thrown she was literally at the top of the ladder yeah. someone kicked the ladder over and she fell mm -hmm. onto another ladder like i watched her body bounce off of a ladder yeah and then she they won the match and she's like running up like cheering like woohoo we won and i was like girl i would be in the hospital <laughs> So just for clarification, that wasn't the same person who won. The the one no. who oh. fell was out. Okay. <laughs> she was she was gone. She needed an ice bath she or something. Yeah. Okay. I, I literally thought it was her, like coming up being like, we won. I was like, girl. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. The, and then, and that was a Mark. televised version. There were other clips of people in the audience who 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 uh, videoed that. It looks so wor so much worse, like from the audience perspective. Really, like Io Io Shirai was on the top of the ladder. I think it was uh, Indy Hartwell pushed the ladder over. Io fell onto another ladder that was set up, and Io's body literally did bounce off. Of it was scene. like it was a trampoline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then she fell on the ground. So much so, like, again, yes. like, the, the regular shot, like, they caught it. They're like, cool, we got it. And they swung back to the ring. Meanwhile, the fan shot, you could see all of the refs, like, <laughs> like running towards uh, EO to alive? make sure. Yeah, make sure she was Ugh. okay. Um, but she, you know, as far as we know, that she's fine. But I love that they, they lingered on Indy Hartwell's face because – Technically, Indy is a face. She's a good guy. So for her to do that, it, it I thought it was great character uh, acting because she was just like, oh, like she was really shocked. Like that's what just happened. She's like, oh my god. <laughs> like so, it, it lingered so long though. I was like, why is she? I was like, climb up the ladder, Indy. Like I was so upset. I was that's like, stop staring. Climb up the ladder. But by the time she had, you know, yeah. gained her herself regained herself to climb up the ladder um i think it was jc jane was there first yes. and like pushed her off or something like that so uh toxic at attraction jc jane and Gigi dolan ended up winning i guess yeah. um, <laughs> mari one thing i will say is that i distinctly remember you last week just talking about how you did not want them to win which we'll get deeper into that because there's another match that toxic attraction technically 
wins um, later yeah. on with Mandy Rose, but we'll get there. But you know, I just oh, I, I did how you did you feel good about this match overall, Mari? Um, the match overall, like Maggie said, uh, it was very very chaotic, but I think the women worked it well. I don't think that I don't think there was like any issues in it, like. Um, none of these women had ever been in a ladder match. I think it was they had. Remember they had said last Except week, like for Io Shirai. Yes, Io. Who, yes, who's Io. the one who fell and broke her body? And well, that's yeah. probably why they. But that's probably why they had her do that stunt, right? Because yeah, she was like, exactly. I can do it. No one else could have done that and been yeah. like mm-hmm. pretty, basically, completely fine from what the reports say. Right. Exactly. So. So yeah, but other than that, I, again, I love a good ladder match. So it was really fun. It was a lot. I what I love when the women get like that down and dirty um for equality uh so it was great um <laughs> down and dirty for equality there you go wow uh, that's a um, so <laughs> yeah so yeah toxic attraction being the people with like the least amount of experience at least uh within wwe being the ones to win huh. gg dolan has a very uh um problematic past and then JC Jane, I have no idea who she is. So I'm just <gasps> like, I'm just not invested in in them. But um, you know, they won. And to keep it moving, we got Mandy Rose versus Ra- Raquel Gonzalez in what they sp- they spun the wheel again. This is in this clip. It, trigger warning. The wheel for a split Chucky. second. Yeah. Well, what is the wheel? Can you and help why me with that st- one? Why did it yes. stop so abruptly? So abruptly. So um, for this one, this wheel, the wheel is uh, has different um, stipulations to the matches. So uh, as you can see, if you're looking at our YouTube, you can see uh, there's Chucky's Choice, the Broiler Room Brawl, the Insane Asylum Weapons Wild Match. So uh, all of these are stipulations to matches. So when Raquel spun the wheel, it stopped very abruptly on Chucky's Choice. Chucky then um, decided that he wanted to see a trick or street fight, I think it was, between them. Um, yeah. And so, which is basically just a no no DQ match between Raquel Gonzalez and Mandy Rose. And they were able to use weapons. And it was, like, pretty brutal. Uh, both of them are, you know, still kind of green. I said a lot last week, I, don't, I didn't care for who won this match. Did not matter to me, um, but Dakota Kai was revealed to be the person who um, we we spec- speculated about last week, the mysterious digger person who was coming back to reinvent themselves. She was the one who cost Raquel Gonzalez her championship, um, of course, because they were partners at one point. You know, then she turned on Raquel. She lost her championship um, matches and she cost Raquel this championship match, which makes sense because if you can't beat Raquel, common sense would say maybe you'd have better luck at beating Mandy. So Hmm. um, made sense. Mandy wins. I don't like that that Dakota Kai is still in NXT. We were so excited when we heard that she was like making the rounds on SmackDown, doing SmackDown um, dark matches. So it kind of sucks that she's not moving up to the main roster. Hmm. Uh, but, you know, it, it is what it is. And so Mandy Rose is now the women's champion, uh, NXT women's champion, which means that now all three members of Toxic Attraction have all of the gold in NXT. And just a um just a reminder here, uh Maggie, NXT is WWE's developmental brand. So it's where okay. like yeah, so it's it's like where most of the the newer talent, the talent that's just signed goes to first. And it's like a lot I less see. experience on this brand yeah. than there is I on see. the other brands. So before we get into any Analysis. Let me just prompt us with uh, Kevin and the Job Has a Squadcast group uh, sent us a question saying, Mandy and Toxic Attraction have all the gold. Do you think Mandy is ready to come back up? Girl, no. Okay, no. I, I, I just want, well, <laughs> no, no, Kevin. here's the thing. I, no, I want to make a, I want to clarify. Thank you so much, Kevin, for the question. Um, I just will say, when I read this question, I sort of thought, I don't think it's a question of if she's ready. Like, I don't think that she was taken down from the main roster and being on WWE Raw with this wider audience. I don't think she was removed from that because she wasn't ready. Right. I, I agree. think that this is a better, like, 
they should actually, in my mind, maybe have like one or two more of the women come down to NXT just because we've talked about this before. They just need some of those solid, really experienced people for the newer ones to learn from. That's yeah. something that Mari's pointed out many times, yes, which I yep. totally agree with. And the other thing, though, with that is that I think that like they're just it, it like this is the a better use of Mandy Rose's time than anything yeah. else probably would be on the main roster. So I like her in this spot and I hope she stays in it for a while. Yeah. And fresher opponents, like basically you need fresher opponents, you know, um, and they clearly brought her down to be the leader of this faction. So I don't think she's coming back up anytime soon because she's now the women's champion. So, right. um, right. yeah. Uh, what did you think Maggie not having much, um, so Actually, this makes sense to me that these are like less experienced um, wrestlers because mm -hmm. this whole section felt to me less clean than the first section. Mm -hmm. um, so that actually makes like a lot of sense to me um, that that NXT is that. Um, yeah. I thought that this like spooky person who like is dictating the match, like coming in like Dakota Kai, I thought that that was like yeah. odd just because I didn't yeah. know that that was like a thing that happened. Um, <laughs> but I really, I really liked um, the, I mean, I liked their makeup. Mm. I thought that that was really cool. Yeah. Um, and, and that's really my only opinion on it. I liked Ooh, the yeah, match honestly. we're going to talk about next way better than this one like this one i could have taken out or left it honestly good i'm makeup, with you though. on this so good makeup is actually great just makeup. Like beautiful a, gowns great never, gowns beautiful gowns i don't yeah. know where where this i first saw this maybe mari maybe it was on like total divas or something or but i remember at one point seeing this being a thing that a lot of the women in nxt had to learn like how to do their makeup for mm -hmm. tv and I don't right. remember where someone who's listening different. probably does. Yeah. yeah. Right. Also, say, so let's I, move on I, to the next match that yeah, Maggie wants let, to talk about. Let's get out of this. Uh, <laughs> side note. I just like it. Out, I, I just want to say as a side note, can Mandy, I just want Mandy Rose to wear like wrestler clothes, not look like Lara Croft from Tomb Raider. That's like my last <laughs> thing I'm getting. I'm like staring at a picture of her. I'm like, why bad. do we have this? It's very but bad. moving on. Yeah. Um, so we got Tommaso Ciampa versus Braun Breaker for the NXT championship match. Yes. Basically very straightforward. What did you like about this match, Maggie? Um, well, I liked it because I wrote Braun is literally gigantic and terrifying, but Tommaso yes. looks scrappy. So yes. it felt fun. And he got the blue, big blue streak painted on him. Yes. And um, they are both amazing acrobats oh my gosh the mm -hmm. acrobatics i wrote like this one feels the most realistic to me mm -hmm. um yeah. and then also the clip turned black and white at one point um yeah. i don't know if it was just the the, the youtube video like, but i was wondering if that was like symbolism like anywhere <laughs> i, don't know. I yeah. wish we could Did say it was symbolism ever? no so okay. it was because um bronze was breaker Yes, blood. Uh, um, and I think it was, it, I think oh. it might have been at this in the, this spot in the match where Braun, um, when Tommaso Ciampa was doing like a DDT, driving Braun's head into the exposed mat and floor. I think he might have actually hit his head on the floor because after Ooh. that is when, you know, um, I think it was like Ciampa rolls Braun back into the ring. And then like literally that's when we start to see it go gray because he was bleeding. Oh, gray. okay. Yeah. So yeah. then it is symbolism of blood. Well, so there we go. Well, it was actual YouTube. blood. No, I, I know it's, it's for yeah. like copyright purposes. Like I get it, but I, yeah. I was, I, cause I was like, is it black and white because like, artistic yeah, reasons? Yeah, yeah, like it's an artistic they, choice. They didn't but, want to yeah. demonetize on YouTube. They didn't, they didn't of want course, to yeah. On YouTube. <laughs> that, yeah, that's probably <laughs> it. Um, yeah, because they are technically are they PG still, Mari, or is it PG? They're PG thirteen. PG thirteen. Oh wait, shoot. Oh, 14, I'm sorry. 13, no, they're, they're no, they're PG still technically. Uh, they're PG still, and then I think they allow some of their pay per views to be PG thirteen. They're at will, basically, at this point. Whatever they yeah. decide. Um, but yeah, it's such a great match. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa was actually uh, his costume was like uh, Ma Ma Mars, the the God of War from um, God of War. Yeah, that video oh. game. The video game. Oh, from God of War. God of War. Yeah. Is that the name of the video game? 
I think that's the we'll name of the video game. We'll go with it. That's a that's a game. And I said Mars. Yeah. It's Aries. He was Aries. From Aries. The, from the where's Jenny Autumn War. when you need her for these? I know, these man. I was about to say I'm I not mean. the right person for <laughs> any sort of yeah. video game other than like Mario video games. Like, oh, yeah. I made the I comparison to Super Smash Brothers. But. It's definitely God of War, and I and I the character's name is uh, one of the two, either Aries or Mars, whatever. But anyways, yeah, such a good match. Um, this was the actually only match where the title did not change hands. Um, and a lot of people weren't sure what if they liked that decision because Braun Breaker, Braun Breaker is still new though. He, he, you know, we talk about this all the time, but he just started wrestling in February. He does have a yeah. very historic lineage. He's from a wrestling family and he did great here. But the problem is if you put the title on somebody too early, then there's no that, other man? place for them to go. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this is technically his first feud in NXT 2.0. So it doesn't make sense. I thought they did a really good job. Yeah. Uh, like Champa had to put him down with like, three knees to the head and then like Chompa did his finisher on him like three times and then he did the right. the drop or whatever I can't remember what it was but do you mean like the, the fair I think it's the fairy tale ending is the finish like, right. I think he hit two of those like at at the very end for the win or something like that yes he had to do like multiple he did that he did the knee finisher that he normally that he used to do with Johnny Gargano and then he did the fairy tale ending like twice yeah. so I they, they made it what no i was just gonna say like literally everything you're pointing out it's just yeah. him being like beat down the entire match exactly like the, the in there they they made yeah. it they're like look he has to do all of this to put this young man down like that's that's a good sign that that's you're like oh braun you know it wasn't just one finisher it was multiple finishers that's how solid he is so that's that was a great way um to put him over while also, you know, still having him lose. So, because like Maggie, he looked, Braun looked very like strong and dominant, like you said, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I wrote in my notes that uh, Tommaso, is that how you say his name? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I said he earned that shit. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. There you go. So, I mean, that's perfect. like the point too. And I, and I think just to a point you were making, Mari, a second ago, like, it is way too soon for Braun Breaker to like be the champion and carry the carry Division. the brand, so to yeah. speak, just because like this is his first match at this level, like at this main event level. And mm -hmm. these matches are different. Like there are some matches, even from what you saw, Maggie, that are, you know, it's like legitimately like a two minute match, short, simple, sweet nothing mm -hmm. to write home about and then there are matches like this that are just longer and like maybe the clips on youtube are short but like it's just a mm -hmm. longer story that they tell and mm -hmm. so he has to get to that point but yeah to me it it wouldn't have made sense if he won the championship just because he has so much to learn mari and and so much mm -hmm. to grow into exactly so kudos to him can't wait to see what happens next for Braun. yes, yes. Um, so we also, this was probably my highlight of the night. Um, what is it? What? I just want to say up front on top of this is that I, I've just, I'm just noticing a pattern. I just want to point it out. So on Netflix, there is a uh, movie called Escape the Undertaker. It features mm -hmm. the Undertaker, who is an Undertaker gimmick. And The New Day, which is a uh, black wrestling tag team entering yes. his mansion and being scared and other things. And I still need to actually watch it. Um, but I don't know what Mari, I just... I see patterns. I, I think it's interesting <laughs> that they love to see black people scared in um, haunted houses. I don't know. I'm well, not weird. I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem. So, yeah, Maggie, so what did you think? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, this is the only skit of the whole, all the clips yeah. you sent me. Say this is the me. only thing that was outside of, and it felt like an episode of like, Indiana Jones like <laughs> he, they were like trying to go and like find the belt and like mm -hmm. use their brains and outsmart them and like they're yeah. that but they were getting scared all along the way by all the booby traps and then when they finally get the belt the the bad guy is there and they have to drop it and run away like it, I, it just felt like it, it, it was just like really really different than everything else mm -hmm. and I was like is this normal what's happening here like do they do this in wrestling? I didn't even know. <laughs> yes. this it, is, it's also, it, 
Mm-hmm. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. It's just like for the developmental brand and um, they, they, they're they focusing more on character work. And this was just a funny break to the the seriousness that is that that ladder match and you know mm-hmm. the, the title that title match and stuff like that um but you know, keep going you're you're just like shocked that this is yeah i well i mean like <laughs> what we're watching we watch wrestling to see like the amazing like athletic ability of these people and like some yeah they, mm-hmm. they're performers <laughs> oh you sure some people do yeah but like they're performers, but like it's their performing mixed with their athletic feats that like makes them so yes. dynamic from what I've yeah. seen. So when yeah. you take the athleticism out of it and you like have these two guys just like going around a house and like the the people that they're interacting with are like just like in, in makeup that like it looks like they did themselves. I, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I, I was just a bit like, what is you couldn't sustain like, I, your disbelief. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. Wow. Yeah. So this is why this was this was one of my favorite um uh portions of the night because it was just so light and funny. And so what happened yeah. was last week Johnny Gargano and Dexter Loomis took uh Carmelo Hayes's belt. And so they told him if you want to come and get it, you have to come to, to the house and you gotta Okay. It. See, I didn't have yeah. the context. I just mm-hmm. like yeah. saw them like going on like a like a weird haunted hunt. house yeah yeah, so, I, yeah. I, I for i will say for one i forgot that that's what happened last week mm. so i was like wait they stole the cha- oh yeah okay the championship was stolen you yeah just, but so, why go to the ha- never mind so, i just would have waited at the arena so carmelo was like i you know i gotta shoot my, my shot i don't miss i need to get my belt back because he had only had it for like a week before it got stolen so he went to the house him and trick it was just so funny because they were just getting scared left and right dexter loomis and johnny um gargano were just messing with them the whole time and they ended they they ended did they leave with the belt yeah okay i was just wondering sure. yeah, he, he ended up leaving with the belt though more than likely we'll get like some more um uh, we'll either get Johnny Gargano versus Carmelo Hayes for the belt, or we'll we'll probably get some tag team stuff um, between the two tag teams. But it was just so funny because I love this last line here where uh, Johnny Gargano was like, man, your house is creepy. Next time we're doing Halloween at my house. And it was just so hilarious <laughs> to me. Again, you might, you'd have to have the, the backstory of all of it in order to find mm-hmm. this as funny, but it, it just also, very hilarious because Dexter Loomis's character is kind of based on like spooky season. Like his last name is Loomis, like from the Halloween franchise. Mm -hmm. And his character is like a non talking, like pops up from behind stuff type of character. So this is like Mm -hmm. his wheelhouse here. So very funny, funny stuff. It just needed to be light and the load. And, And Maggie, we didn't even send you the clips of, um, Every year they have like a Halloween party and there's like mm-hmm. a Halloween party with clips. It was so super funny. But I'm like, we don't, okay. have, we don't have to talk well, about this. Question about that. That might lead into, yeah. I don't want to jump ahead too far, mm-hmm. but question about that Halloween party thing leading into the next match mm-hmm. is that like all of a sudden they're, they're fighting each other in the ring. They're wrestling in the ring and then they throw someone out of the ring and they land in a crowd of people in Halloween costumes. And I was like, yeah. I didn't realize that, they, that a crowd was allowed in the pit, given that like people are th- getting thrown in and out of the pit and jumping in and out all the time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, they're literally going to break the banana's nose. But yeah. So, uh, see, so, so, who are these so people? the next match. I'm, I'm, yeah. The next match is MSK versus Imperium. When they spun the wheel, they got the Lumberjack O'Lantern match. So what that is, is a regular, it's a Lumberjack match. A Lumberjack match is when the rest of the talent come out around the ring and they basically are enforcers. They they keep... They keep everybody in the ring. Uh, like a normal lumberjack match, uh, like if the baby face gets thrown out of the ring, the the heels, the bad guys will start beating up on the baby face before throwing them I back see. into the ring. Yeah. And that's why it's a lumberjack o match. They, they all had their costumes on. 
Mari, yeah. this makes so much more sense to me because I think like, are these literal fans who don't know how to like, you know, like just a person is coming at them and they'll be like, ah, like that's what I thought. But hearing mm -hmm. that it's the other wrestlers who are just like dressed up, who are highly trained and know what they're doing. Yeah. Like that makes it, that makes so much sense to me. But I thought it was like such yeah. a fun touch. As somebody who didn't know what was going on, I was just like, oh my goodness, like there's people there. It was, yeah. it was really, really fun. I, I really liked this match i i yeah. thought that this was an example of you know like when you were saying this is the the new like up and coming people who are like trying to get experience i felt like i watched a lot of choreography happen and i could mm -hmm. like physically myself as a non-wrestling watcher like see okay now they're doing this choreography which would mean to me probably that they are um not as quick uh -huh. as probably some of the way more experienced wrestlers. Like they're, you know, it's, it's, their movements are a little bit more segmented. Like I watched, um, the guy with braids, like sit in the corner nicely and just like mm -hmm. sit there for about five seconds before the bald guy roundhouse kicked him in the face. Like, right. <laughs> and I, was, I was like, like, um, but that was really, um, I, I thought that though, even though I was like, oh, I can like really see the choreography. Like the choreography was so good. I thought yeah. that it was really, really fun. No, exactly. Am I yeah. No, no, okay. it's good. Agreed. This is one of the better matches um, uh -huh. of the night. Imperium and MSK have been building on their beef for like weeks now. And yeah. I, I always talk about how much I, I like MSK and how quick and um, quick and quick all their choreography and right. stuff is mm -hmm. uh matt did, did you have any thoughts yeah. before we talk about no, this the was, msk stuff this was a great match and i felt like um uh, the crowd really responded to it positively or like they should yeah. have i it was, did it was just, at they home. all over the place they mm -hmm. were all over the place and it but it's like this is how um wrestling fans are such a huge part of the show and i feel mm -hmm. like the wrestling fans were doing their part by actually reacting to what was happening in the ring, which was really impressive. Um, but Mari, I know that that kind of leads into to this whole news that's been confirmed about why MSK um, were being booed beforehand. So do you want to mm -hmm. do you want to confirm? Do you want to? Yeah. Yes. We were, we were talking about this observer. last week. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about this last week, but MSK was getting a lot of weird mixed reactions for a while in the um uh, on NXT. Like they were getting booed when they're clearly baby faces. Their move set is baby face, and they were um they were being portrayed as faces, but they were getting booed. And so we talked about it last week. It the rumor was that um. Izzy's family uh, was maybe poisoning the audience against uh, MSK, and we got confirmation. We, we broke the story before uh, Meltzer we did. Didn't, okay, no. that out. <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, you guys with the Twitter. scoop! I know we did have the scoop. It was us. We're the scoop. That's what they call yes. us. The scoop. Scoop. Yes. Uh, so, but uh, Dave Meltzer confirmed on Wrestling Observer newsletter that, um, from what they understood, it was Izzy's parents were turning the audience against MSK. I think um, they were saying that they they like maybe have found the people who are doing it are not inviting some of them back. Um, plus there's a fresh influx of, they're now putting the NXT tickets on like Facebook or something. I think you said that Matt, or I don't, I don't know, but they're, they used to invite the same audience members back to NX, NXT. Yeah. Um, NXT, yeah, they used to uh, invite the same audience members back, so it was easier with so so few of them mm. for it to for you to be able to hear the boos and then for people to chime in with the boos. Um, so uh, now I think they're kind of like um, rotate the people who are coming in so that you yeah. know people aren't sabotaging the 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 show. So and then yep. because wow. this news because this news broke, then the internet like all weekend last week people were showing love to, for msk and so that was really 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 nice um to see and they were responding they were so happy that people like um were backing them up uh because yeah. they they did drop their titles here and i think now that they don't have the titles they can definitely um like work their way back up and and we can see them what what they're going to be like with as not champions because basically they they won the dusty cup and then they won the championships immediately after coming into nxt so yeah. 
yeah, we'll see how they how they do um, without the belt. We will Matt, see. what did you? <laughs> what? No, I'm just shaking my head because I'm like, oh my god, they have like 300 people in this building, and mm-hmm. the way that they react could really affect how we at home feel. Exactly. And so I'm glad that they found a way to like figure that hey, situ- that situation that- out. That connects with, I mean, Big Brother. We all saw the booing that got started by a couple people when people left the house. And there are still Mm -hmm. to this day some of those people who should not have gotten booed the way they did. Exactly. You know? Or yeah. or Big Brother Canada, how they could hear the audience booing had affected uh, or cheering. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though terrible. uh, that did lead to one of the most iconic moments in BB Can history. It did, so but as an as a as a true spoilers. Big Brother Can <laughs> to Netta fan, oh, that yeah. was yeah, heartbreaking I, for me. I can see uh-huh. how you you did not like that. Yeah, I get it. I completely understand. But yeah, so um, so happy for M- MXK. Hopefully, they can at the very least start off with a clean slate, so that they're not burdened by people hating him, them literally just because Nash Carter had said something to the effect of that he didn't think Izzy should be Choke. taking a choke slam. At he didn't 12 think a child should be yes, a child should not be wrestling. Which, like, I'm not here to say that a child shouldn't be wrestling. That's not me, but. Um, yeah, but it's, like, it's just like you gotta make sure that it's like not gonna kill them or injure them permanently. But hey, that's the thing that happens. So I, I will also say, Mari, how do you feel about um, the about Imperium, Marcel Bartel, and Fabian Eichner as the champions? Any oh, feelings, thoughts, reactions, anything? I, I like, I'm it's okay, like, I know they're really good <laughs> workers. Abs. Yeah, oh they're my really God. good. Abs. They were on Those NXT abs. UK, and since I don't watch NXT UK, I you know I don't have a real connection to them. But I do, I do, um, I do know that they are very abs. good workers. They are, you know, their characters, their character work are just kind of like a silent, mean dude. So it's fine. They're heels. You can sometimes do more with heel champions than face champions. So it's fine. I'm not like disgruntled about it i would really love for some of these new i think it's a a good move so that some of these new up-and-coming tag teams can start aiming for the belt like the creed brothers uh briggs and jensen um like uh hero i don't know if hero and um kushida Kushida are gonna be yeah but like yeah this is this is a good move it's a logical move so i'm fine with it let me just yeah i I think that it'll be interesting to see where it goes let's hope we get some interesting character work from them though right that's yeah cool. that's the main problem has their character work so but again maybe maybe we we missed it so i think it I'm might excited, be us though. because I mean, the ta- that type did, division is pretty yeah good. i was gonna say people seem like fairly excited about them winning right? yeah they were very yes, excited about so. imperium yeah yeah good for them so it makes sense. good for those imperium yeah, good, fans good shout out to them uh, they are. <laughs> So, and finally, before we wrap up NXT uh, 2.0, I just want to really quickly, I don't even care about the match, to be quite honest, but we have to talk about Diamond Mine issuing an open challenge. Like, this is such a good idea. Uh, Malcolm Bivens, he's such, he's the man. So, Diamond Mine. Malcolm Bivens announces that Diamond Mine will be doing an open challenge, a pick your poison open challenge. So, this means... I'm hoping, well, well, at least what I understood, every week they're going to do an open challenge. And basically, whoever comes out, it could be a tag team that'll come out and face the Creed Brothers, or a, a woman can come out and face Ivy Niles, or like a, a man can come out and, and face uh, Roderick, who is the current cruiserweight champion. This week yes. they issued the challenge. Odyssey Jones came out to face Rod- Roderick Strong. I mean, it was a, it was a uh, rematch from 205 Live. Um, that just happened. Mm. Um, so there's n- nothing to really write home about in in the mm, match no. itself. But I really do love this concept. Like again, I'm a sucker for open challenges. I love a good open challenge, and we saw a few this week. So I love that. But this idea of the pick your poison open challenge is so genius because we just never know who's gonna come through that through the, the the ring through the curtain so yes kudos like this is if you want to get me invested in diamond mine this is the perfect way to do this and malcolm malcolm Bivens is the man 
He is amazing. And you know what? I Look, I want to see more of him and more of what they have to offer. I have to mm-hmm. say, um, Ivy Nile still makes me nervous. Like, I... <laughs> I'm yes. I, the rest of them. I'm like, okay, okay. Like I could, uh, uh, you know, duck and dodge uh, the the Creed brothers, you know. But <laughs> Ivy Nile with that those wh- I was gonna say whips and ch- with that chain over her mm-hmm. neck. I'm not trying to mess with Ivy Nile. That is I'm a telling that scares you. me very much. So, uh, what did you think about this, uh, Maggie? Um, I just thought that this was another example of like Odyssey Jones being literally two times larger than his <laughs> opponent yes. and like still getting roundhouse kicked in the face and passing out. Like that was fun. I thought, um, I thought, I thought that the match was fun. I liked this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think the big thing, I mean, I, the size difference is definitely was huge here but uh, the thing with me with this is that i almost feel like odyssey jones is like still working his way to being like a a truly competent big big man quote unquote yeah character Mm -hmm. because he like he's strong and he's big but like imagine when he really is able to like put in all the pieces and really like uh, navigate the ring as a big character because I felt like he had the size, but it it wasn't like it didn't give me like giant like we've seen from some people just like, tossing them around and doing all these special strength and power moves. Yeah. And so that's the one thing. But it was nice to see him at all on yeah. the show. That was really nice. Yeah, Odyssey Jones has been like billing himself as like 405 Live, like because he's been he's been wrestling on 205 Live a lot, which is literally Maggie. It's called 205 Live because it's like you're supposed to weigh under two 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 hundred and five pounds in order to <laughs> like that was the original, uh, you him. know. Oh no, it, yeah. Yeah. But it's you know, it's just be kind of become a like a fourth brand of its own like a small Mm -hmm. brand on its own that barely gets any nobody really watches it and so they they use that i think they use that to as additional developmental for some of the the new new stars um but he yeah he's been on it um pretty regularly and odyssey jones was a part of the breakout tournament he i think he got to the finals with carmelo carmelo hayes if i remember correctly um so yeah he's still coming into his own great match i just love this this open challenge and i really hope oh i want to see ivy niles in the i want to see her wrestle like i want to see her wrestle we'll get so it I, we're gonna I, get it soon i know I, I hope we get I hope we get a women's match or even the Creed brothers. I actually really like the Creed brothers and, and we talked about it last week. I was so pissed they lost last week. So I just I love that their their background is in amateur wrestling and they're they're named yeah. Brutus and Julius. So I, that, I like those names. I do like yeah. the names. I do feel like though the thing with the Creed brothers is that they like there was that Maggie, you actually referenced the moment where like they, there was the big dive onto all the people in the costumes at the, mm-hmm. the um, or somewhere in the, the lumberjack match. And the mm-hmm. Creed brothers were out there. And like, there's, you could see an experience in different things. Like they had their backs to the person who was falling off the top rope. Which is oh, like a yeah. small inexperienced thing that makes me yeah. nervous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like a sa- that's a safety thing. Um, a safety so thing. don't love that, Excuse but me. that's kind of what happens. You're yeah, because always, you're always welcome and excused, Maggie. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because th- and that that's that's the little things they have to work on because they they are just amateur. Their background is amateur wrestling, so they 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 have right, the wrestling yeah. part, but you kind of need the the entertainment part mm-hmm. and the the little details. So good for them. And that's it for the NXT um, <laughs> um, uh, Halloween Havoc special um, highlights. You can find all of the highlights in our show notes uh, in your podcast feed or yeah. in our YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, let's talk What's about next? SmackDown. SmackDown! Smackdown. Which is, which I is, thought mm-hmm, this yeah. was fun. This stuff was fun. Yes. Um, This one I felt has the best entertainers, like the best people who know how to like talk, put on a show. They know their characters. Like I also thought the production value specifically in this one was perhaps maybe, well, there wasn't a Mm -hmm. ladder 
challenge. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I just meant like when like I don't I don't want to jump ahead, but like when like Shotzi came out and like uh, like that all I was like, whoa, this is so yeah, like really fun. Um, I had a good time with with this section of it all, and and there's clearly a lot of like lore, like that. It feels very much like when you watch. Okay, mm-hmm. so again, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you another comparison. We're with like, you. Like when mm-hmm. your mom loves soap operas and she watches them every single day or whatever, or your grandma, and you sit down to watch one with her. And like you gather that there's so much history between two of these characters and you're like, what is like, why, why is there this, like what's happening here? Like, this is so charged, even though it's like nothing really happens between them in that episode, but you're like, this is so charged. And you're like, grandma, what happened? And she's Mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh. And there's literally like, she could go on for three hours about the history. Like that's how Mm -hmm. I felt with all of these matches. Like, so we had the same childhood. (laughs) (laughs) literally was it days of our lives because that was my general hospital oh not general hospital Mm. but uh but you know what i mean like i was watching this and i was like there's so much weight to all of this and Mm. i really like you can tell like that's why i'm saying like i felt the performances were really strong in this grouping because i could feel that like all of the weight yeah, wow. and this is this is on Fox, so this is on like the only one that's on network television. Mm-hmm. So they got them. Oh, yay. I, I was, I mean, and also like if that makes sense to me that they would want the performers on their network who can like really bring the, or mm-hmm. they would want the wrestlers on their network that could really bring the performances. I don't know if that's um, bad to call the wrestlers performers instead of wrestlers. They're everything. Uh, and they don't even okay. call it. They don't even, they they don't don't even call, call them. them. They call them superstars. Superstars. So okay. Yeah. Great. Call them whatever. Well, the superstars in on SmackDown, I thought were really compelling. Yes. Look and so <laughs> we start off with Charlotte opening SmackDown with, I guess, an open challenge. It, she's, she. It was like a backhanded open challenge. She basically she was, was like, like, it was more like a say, like she hit the hit the escape button. She was like, "Oh, Sasha, you want to wrestle me? Oh, oh well, mm, okay. Uh, let's just have someone else come out here and wrestle." Yes, me is what exactly. Was yeah, Sh- uh, Charlotte comes out mildly addresses the rumors, like, "Oh, y'all been talking about me all week," um, and then she said, t- "The one thing that I." didn't like her saying that i'm like i can't imagine that the boss is like this but somebody had to write written this promo totally but she says like when any other woman wins a champ a title in a championship it's like the best thing ever it's the best day of their lives it's everything and she said for me it's just another what she say like Tuesday friday or night. Third, friday night okay friday which makes sense <laughs> like yes. which i mean Okay, girl. She is the most decorated female, whatever, whatever. She's, I don't, I think I've lost count, but I think she's like 14 title reign, something like that. 30, who um, knows? Yeah. Uh, um, but like, why would you, why would you say that? It's like, a good that- line. It's a fine line. Like, I, not, I don't mean it's a fine line. Like, it's mm-hmm. a fine line in that I didn't, it didn't stand out to me. Like, it was just a typical Charlotte promo. Yeah, I I just felt like it felt I mean, not slightly great. disrespected. To, I mean, disrespected yeah, but have you like you're all... saying I don't care about this title. Like, how is that not coming off as like I do not care about this title? Look, I don't know. Let's ask Maggie. Maggie, what did you think of this promo? Um, as somebody who has no idea who these people are, yeah, I thought that it was more focused on like Sasha seeming pathetic. Like, that's what I got from it. Like, I, I thought that the offset of Charlotte being like, I'm amazing. And Sasha being like, please let me, please fight you. I really need to fight you. And then yeah. when Charlotte and Shots, Shotzi were Shotzi. fighting and Sasha's yeah. like on the on the side of the ring, like looking distraught and like <laughs> concerned. Like, I thought that the perhaps the point of Charlotte coming out and being super cocky was to offset how like sad Sasha was. 
Sasha was really kind of sad here. I mean, this, yeah, I, I, I did. I'm glad you said that because that's kind of what I picked up on, not only from mm -hmm. Sasha this week, but actually last week. So not even to recap it, but just to talk about Sasha's role last week, she came out, was basically there to challenge Charlotte. And then they had a little bit of a, a, a of a dust up as the, kids say i don't yeah, know um, right. but you know that was kind of like an afterthought and i also kind of felt like the in the charlotte sasha dynamic she kind of ended up being a little bit of an af afterthought especially because it became about what happened after the match who, truly wait who sasha who became an afterthought sasha kind of did sasha. for me in okay. this yeah well, yeah because let me just explain i oh. This was very confusing to me. As somebody who watches wrestling every week, who analyzes the dynamics of the storylines, this didn't really make a lot of sense to me. I, I don't know if I really liked it. Um, first off, they're, they're, they've been talking about how Sasha will probably be the number one babyface for SmackDown going forward. So in order to do that, you have to flip her alignment because the last time we saw her, she was, she was acting very healy. She was acting very bad guy. Mm -hmm. So... So going up against Charlotte automatically gives you like 50% towards good guy because Charlotte is, you know, a natural heel and, and, you know, natural to root against. So that's what we got. That's what I was getting when we were first, when she first came out. Then Shotzi comes out to accept the open challenge. And I had two minds of this. Shotzi was actually a really good baby face. People love her in NXT. People really got behind her. However, she's been on the main roster for what's it been now, Matt? Like at least a month, I want to say. I think Three she months. Was there. She got I, there in July. Did she really? Jesus. Yeah, with Tegan Knox. They randomly <sighs> yeah. showed up, after, I think, after Money in the Bank. Probably the week Okay. After. Yes, it was something like that. I knew she had been on there for – she had been up on the main roster for a while, but they – they took her off a of TV. They took her and Tegan off a of TV. I guess they had nothing for them. So when you have a hot, somebody who's a hot commodity, people like her, the random pairing with Tegan, because she wasn't pairing with her before, um, but you take them off a of TV for a while. People like me, I just forgot that she had not been on TV for three months. Like they, they, yeah. she's had little backstage se segments here and there, but nothing significant. So when she comes out initially, the crowd reaction is like, Oh, it's Shotzi. When uh -huh. before it used to be like the 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 roof would go up, at least especially in NXT. Again, that is a smaller I, audience. Mm -hmm. Mari, just as somebody who doesn't know anything, yeah. you're right. When she came out, it wasn't like crazy fanfare. But right. when she was like wrestling in the ring, mm -hmm. I, I said the crowd loves Shotzi. I need exactly. the backstory. Like exactly. clearly the crowd loves her. Well, right. I, the way that so, I read that, the way that I read it is just that like the reaction was weird at first because yes, she's a she's like she's a face, like people love her. And but yet she's kind of in this was in this heel spot where it's like, no, Sasha wants the match, mm -hmm. but now Shotzi's getting it. So there was like a little bit teensy weensy bit of a mixed reaction i think it was a confusion reaction just like uh, i am mean, yeah. so oh. so let me continue so then yeah. like maggie points out during the match she starts getting the chassis chance which again facing charlotte is not that hard but also <laughs> again when you put people out there and you have them wrestle and you have them do what people love for them to do, then it reminds you, it's like, oh yeah, Shotzi is amazing. Like we love watching her wrestle and her green hair. And she was taking crazy bumps from Charlotte. That was, that was a pretty good match. Um, their chemistry wasn't there in the beginning of the match. It seemed a little stilted, but they kind of picked it up by the end. So finally, you finally have the crowd behind Shotzi. Um, Sasha, uh, creates the interference that, um, that, uh, enables Charlotte to get the win. And then you have Shotzi beat up Sh Sasha after the match. What what it's, happened with that? Why? I was confused. She was angry. She why? Was like a little hurt. It's it, but it's weird. It's weird. And that's what and that's what my husband said. That's what James said. He was like, she's mad because Sasha cost her the match. So she's attacking mm -hmm. Sasha. 
What? Why no. did Sasha well, cost the, her the match? She exactly. She didn't cost her the match, which is like the okay. This the the finish of this match was a little bit sloppy, where mm. Sasha gets up on the apron, is yes. standing there, jaw jacking with Charlotte. With Charlotte, yeah. And then Charlotte, for whatever reason, steps out of the way. Maybe like five seconds before she should have, because then Shotzi yeah. stands up. Charlotte's already not even in front of Sasha. Shotzi yeah. like run, runs at Sasha and then stops immediately. Like, oh, you're not Charlotte. That was just not well timed, yeah. In my opinion, and from what I could see, I think it was a little off. But Sasha did not cost her the match. I think. Mm -hmm. I think that there's brain. you could you could see a world where it's like I'm a sore loser for losing this one. Um, but wow, you mad, huh? Like what? We didn't expect that. She was and angry. that's a, and and it didn't make sense. So so they do this beat down on Sasha, which again I'm assuming is to turn you know to help Sasha turn face because Sasha is really good at getting beat down. Like that is mm -hmm. literally is. her bread and butter. Um, of just flailing around and letting people hurt her. But Shotzi doing it makes no sense because everybody wants to root for Shotzi. So now are you uh, telling me that Shotzi is heel? Yes. Because yes, Mari. I mean, yes. yeah. 100%. Yes, I was like, oh, she's bad. I hate A it. Thousand percent. I don't like that. I love it. I, I love it. I don't like that. I like it. I like it. Not for long, though, because I feel like if you have someone like for anyone to be a truly um, effective heel, they need to, I think, first come from like a place of likability. Like you need to establish a rapport where people are then really disappointed that you're a heel. Like what? I love, I love Shotzi. And now she's going like being an evil and I, on us. And, and I, but I just, that. I think that they have, I think that this is. I think it came too early if that's the case. Because again, how do you go from lukewarm? She had lukewarm reaction to no reaction from, from Shotzi when she came out. She finally gets a reaction in the ring. I think they could have held uh, off on that turn for at least one more week. Have her come out, they be mad, have. be like, hey, I, I, you know, I deserve a rematch because Sasha got in the way, or have her in a match versus Sasha and then have her turn heel. So, like you said, so we're more invested in her face character before she turns heel because I was well, not invested. Real. I was I was like this is dumb. I was I I really feel like WWE turned sometimes they turn their natural baby faces too soon, especially if they don't have um a plan for them. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens, but uh at least Shotzi is in the conversation with the yeah. the top of the women's card. To give like the flip side the positive of it like that's exactly it like she wasn't being talked about i don't think there was truly a wwe could have just built her up to your point mari as like a very effective face character mm -hmm. but that takes some time and some effort and energy and they weren't willing to put that in so knowing them i would say that this is a really good move for her character just to be more relevant but i do to your point kind of wish that they would have invested in let's build her up and get people on the main roster to love her mm -hmm. um they did get kind of lucky though that people care at all i will say because she hasn't done anything on the main roster that's really been interesting at all or like developed the you know she hasn't done anything to develop the love with the fans and you know so this was interesting but I right. like I like the beat down. I like to see Sasha get thrown into the tank, and you know, I hope yeah. Sasha's. Uh, I hope that like they figure out what's happening. Like, is Shotzi going to team with Charlotte? I don't know. I don't think so. I think we'll just gonna, we're just going to get Shotzi versus Sasha next week. Uh, and then I think that's what's going to happen. It, and then it goes back to it being. Charlotte Sasha versus Sasha. Charlotte. Yep. Mm -hmm. That is kind of an annoying aside if that's all we get, but we'll see. Yeah. I mean, we could speculate. We'll see what they do with this. Hopefully, let's just hope that they commit to Shotzi's new heel character. That's like all I will say for now cuz they're they're doing it like go full force WWE. I guess I did I again, I just don't we need to move on, but yeah. You Shayna Baszler is right there. Like that's if you need a, a heel one, you have Charlotte, and then you have heel two and Shayna, who they have been building up. So like, yeah. So th that just means to me that means that slot Shotzi as heel three, which is the heel that gets beat. You know what I'm look, saying? Look, 
we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens because we can mm-hmm. speculate about what will happen. But I think that this is a situation where it's like, will they um, do something big with this? Will Shotzi get like a lot of promo time or? Like, we'll see. But this this kind of, to me, we'll is see. making me think like she's sliding into Carmela's spot, if you know what I'm oh, saying. Oh, no. You, you, yeah, exactly. You don't want that. Um, so, uh, next up we have Drew McIntyre. He issued an open challenge, like a legit open challenge. Cool. Whatever. It's true. Uh, uh, one thing you'll notice, Maggie, issuing open challenges is a very face thing to do. Like the good guys are like, I can take on anybody. <laughs> so like, yeah. they, Cause they don't want to yeah. like make an enemy and be like, I'm calling you out. Um, yeah. this, this match, the yes. only thing I have to say about it. Is that like they are just throwing around their body weight? Yeah. Oh my goodness! <laughs> like li- li- what? The- yeah. Yes, Musa- Mustafa wild. was getting thrown around. He was getting thrown yeah. around so much in this match, and I loved it. So I'm glad Me you lo- you appreciate that too. I yeah, was like, this- whoa! This is so intense. <laughs> it was great. And this is uh this is just one of those matches. It was set up for what the the big thing here is Mustafa's uh, promos before and after the match, um, mm-hmm. and you know the the obviously harping on the size difference was you know the whole point of the yeah. whole like him getting thrown around and him being you know defeated. But like mm-hmm. I loved how uh, Mustafa came out and basically was like, you know, you're booing me because of me. Um, and I love how he told Drew he had like more talent in his pinky finger than Drew had in his whole body, which is f- kind of funny because like it, if you're we're talking about like he said like agility and all of that, like uh, it's kind of true, you know what I'm saying? Um, no. Mustafa <laughs> Ali is like he's well, he's a smaller guy who he's like he's a cruiserweight, so the cruiserweights normally are the ones who are like really doing all the high flying things. They're jumping around. It's the reason why he can be tossed from drew's height and be okay like that you know it's the difference between a cruiserweight um a high flyer and somebody who's like a power base like yeah it's kind of like if you look at cheerleading like drew's a power base and you know (laughs) he's a he he's the base that just flings people off of him yeah yeah but i love that after the like after the match most of us like admit it admit it you hate me because and i was like say it say it he's like say my it. name is mustafa Ali. and he threw the the mic down and this so all right L- so, lazy well mustafa ali has had this type of character for a while now he's uh, he no he has hit when he first came in it was like i want to show people that you can look like me and you can basically be a bad uh, not a bad guy you can be a good guy you, don't, you right. shouldn't make assumptions it was such a great um face character but of course it got him nowhere with wwe and we've been talking about this for months now so th- as the years have gone on he just recently he he at one point he he was the head of a group that was trying to like basically destroy wwe from the inside because again he was saying like you guys never gave me a chance this this and that he just wrapped up his storyline with Mansoor who um, is also a Muslim wrestler just like him, but who is a face Muslim wrestler. And Mustafa kept telling uh, Mansoor, you can't do this. Like, they're just going to disrespect you like they disrespected me. And he tried to to basically bring Mansoor to the bad side. Uh, They've wrapped up that storyline. So now this is just a continuation. This is like the full incarnation of this heel character where he's just like... I like I am not the bad guy. You are the bad guy. He's basically calling the whole crowd racist, and I'm I'm here for it. I don't care. I, I, like I, it. I, I, I think I, like I but, I yeah, but I think like here's the thing that bothers me about it because you're like I, I think that what he's saying is that there's a, there's truth to it, right? Mm-hmm. Like there are people who don't like him because of that identity, but at the same time. It's like, it's like not, it's so, it's so real. I wish there was just more legitimacy behind what he was doing. Yeah. They were like, you know what? Maybe there's, there's something there. But this was just awkward because it was like him, he made that comment. And then the commentators are like, 
Ooh, what what did he just say what oh, how <laughs> right. da- oh gasp oh gasp. Yeah. they were just like so thrown off like there wasn't like a so i do feel like it is a little lazy in the sense of like well okay it would be nice to like get across the points that might be kind of valid but instead just like here's a heel character who thinks that we don't like him because of his like ethnic race and ethnicity. Color, yep and well so but that's the thing. I think, really. like I like I said, you have to take in consideration his whole entire career over the past. What's it been? Oh no! Five I years? think I think you did a you did a great job, Mari. Ta- I had this thought as you were saying this. You mm-hmm. did a great job legitimizing the storyline and the character mm-hmm. and the approach. I think without that context, though, it kind of falls. Flat. It, it, I it agree. Falls flat. You know. I agree. And WWE I, it, doesn't rely on context all that often. No, they like, don't. Maggie, you did talk about like the 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 deeper stories. We're getting the General mm-hmm. Hospital, the days of our lives mm-hmm. in here. But I just kind of feel like they uh they they're also really good at the like oh this is your first time tuning in we're gonna make sure you understand what's going on and so mm-hmm. um i feel you on that Mari. so before i before i, I get maggie's thoughts i just want to say like i think that this could be it can it, it can go one of two ways it could go left yes. just like it's it's just like the muhammad character that they had like it, it's muhammad it's, it's hassan it, muhammad hassan yes it could go in that direction of that character where he started off you know the same kind of way or you know if they put full control in to ali's hands it can be better because ali is just really good at what he does um but i the reason why i kind of like it is i don't take it 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 is aimed at the crowd but i feel like the promo is more for the back you know what i'm saying like i i I, you know it's played to the crowd but i feel like it's pointed at the back um Maggie, what did you think of, about this? Yeah. Um, so I wasn't, I got the fact that he was referring to his, you know, his ethnicity. Culture, that, that's yeah. The re- yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I got the fact that that's what he was referencing, but I figured yeah. I would just need to come on and hear you guys contextualize it for me, which you've done an amazing job. Um, I just yeah. felt like they were just throwing, like I said, they were throwing their bodies around in that match. And I was like, these are talented acrobats. Like they're acrobats, yes. you know, they're so talented. Yeah. And yeah. and there it's Oof. WWE trying to capitalize on the the state of the society today. They're like we've saw we saw it with Joe Gacy. We talked about it with Joe Gacy last last week. Um yeah. but it it's easy heel heat basically because make pe- how do you make people matter but low key accuse them of being racist at this point. So uh that that's yeah. what they're capitalizing off. No, of. and that's that's exactly where I'm like, okay, been there done that. Like let's yes. let's do some things that are more very cheap. Like you said, yeah, lazy cheap, booking Matt. Lazy yeah, booking. exactly. Cheap heat. But it has nothing for- to do with the it like that doesn't that's no reflection on the performers. Um, I feel like I always call them performers, Maggie. Um, but that's like no reflection on the performers themselves because they're just kind of going with the storyline or even mm-hmm. influence the storyline. Um, you know, again, Drew and Mustafa Ali are just amazing and the match really showed it. Um, so I, I love that. And I, I, I did think that this, for what it was, was like one of the... Oddly, like one of the stronger matches just from a storytelling perspective on the show. And I just wanted to state that because I don't think it's like meant to be a strong match compared with everything else. But I did feel like this was one of the stronger ones from that perspective. Right. Yes. Next up, we had King Xavier Woods. And um, we had this backstage segment between um, him and... later sir kofi and uh hit row which was really just really funny um i loved uh i loved just seeing them just be hilarious together hit row uh sung a song for them i i loved how i need xavier to continue this but like basically throwing in like big words um but him and kofi like kofi said can you hit can you um uh spit some hot fire for your king it was just so funny it's like it's, it's not an accent but it's just like a weird way of speaking <laughs> that they're doing i mean and this royal. is a good rub this is a good rub for hit row this is this was yes. definitely a rub this is um letting people know oh they're good with new day they are good guys like come be goofy with new day come get people um um and 
inspired with Hit Row. Before we talk about uh, the nighting, uh, Maggie, what did you think about this backstage segment here? It was fun. It was cute. It was, you know, uh, yeah, I I thought that uh, it had like the energy of the like a bit of the Halloween haunted house thing where it was just like everybody's having a good time, you know, with each other, mm -hmm. um, which like mm -hmm. is is fun. And, you know, I I just um, yeah, I thought I thought it was cute. I, I thought I was more confused by the nighting thing. Oh, and, then, okay. and then when the match started and I realized that they were like tag teaming together, I was like, oh, yeah. he was knighted because they're like on the same team. Like oh, that, yeah. I, yeah. that's just like generalized confusion on my part. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah. Sorry. That, that is the new day. They are a team. Um, a biggie, the, the world champion was also mm -hmm. a part of their faction. And they're, they're like one of the, the most decorated tag teams in all of the WWE. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, Big E is off being world champion on Raw, while Xavier Woods, the reason why Xavier Woods and Zelina are wearing the, the crowns is because they yes. won tournaments. Yeah, they won. I so see. He, okay. So he, he won, won the King of the Ring tournament. I think they said it in the clip. And so now he's the king and he wanted to knight Kofi, who was yes. his tag team partner. They, mm -hmm. They've been partnering a part of the New Day for uh, seven years now. And he knighted him. But not only did he knight him. So, Maggie, you, you watch Game of Thrones, right? I thought you yeah, watched Game of Thrones. Yeah, all of it. All of so it, yeah. He he made Kofi the hand of the king. And he gave him the, <laughs> um, the unicorn pin. Um, in the style of the hand of the king, so that's what wa was happening here, mm -hmm. and it was so careful and hilarious. You, nobody uh, really wants to be hand of the king, that's not right. a good place to be in Game of yeah, Thrones. Yeah, it sounds you qu quite often can lose your head, but yeah, it was so hilarious. Again, they're like, I'm glad that they're, I'm glad he's not talking with like a weird affectation, but the way he is, the way that he structures his sentences are quite quite hilarious you can definitely tell he's using like bigger words and stuff and then of course all of a sudden what? the usos come out to be party poopers as they are, are you know want yeah, to, to be they? sometimes um they are the current tag team champions the usos um well so i thought that it was really like they're like terrifying rock metal gods that's what i wrote about them like in their like styling and stuff I thought right. um, really? like they they had the law the one guy when he was like in the actual wrestling match was wearing like leather shorts and like had like long red hair and I was like like for whatever reason I was like this looks like like a, a heavy metal like head banging like mm. front front like singer but mm -hmm. maybe that was just because I was you know I have never seen these people before in my life and that's what's yeah. totally off base. Yeah, what do you have against leather shorts? <laughs> Literally nothing. I actually, the next one, I have much more, many more opinions about their wardrobe choices, but we'll get there. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. What did but you was, think about this uh, nighting, Matt? I I really appreciated the, the nighting. I like that Kofi is Sir Kofi now. Like yeah, that's, Sir that's Kofi. That's fun. Uh, joining the tradition of uh, people like Sir Elton John, Sir John yeah. Hartney, others. Sir Kofi fits right in there. Um, mm -hmm. So that was really nice. But it, I, I wonder how it will play out, what they'll do. They're going to have so much fun with these segments and promos. And yes. it does always seem like the, uh, that the New Day has a lot of... Uh, flexibility or, or mm -hmm. leeway when it comes to what they're saying or what they're doing. They're very trusted oh, yeah. to do that. So it's going to be fun. It'll be fun. Um, let's see how long it lasts for. Cause I am curious, like how long that this like King Woods could be King Woods for the rest of time in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, Sir Kofi is interesting though. Cause he was world champion. Like he was the main new day member for a while and then now he's kind of in the backseat role which i think is a good one for him to support mm -hmm. hope uh support xavier woods more mm -hmm. let's see where it goes it's wrestling you never know well i mean they did just pin the tag team champion so one would think at some point we're gonna get them versus the usos for the titles yeah yeah you'd think so mm -hmm. but i mm -hmm. think that that's like I think it's it's going to be interesting to kind of see how it uh how this 
magic unfolds. I mean, a New Day Usos match is never something that you could truly compare or com- compare about, <laughs> complain about. And I'm telling we, you, yeah, we saw all of, like the classic uh new day usos magic i don't even know what's going on in half these pictures but like that's the thing um it never gets old to see them in the ring um but at the same time i was like wow the thing that's amazing about them is that you kind of just have to look at it and say like okay they're gonna put on an amazing match Mm -hmm. no matter what um Mm -hmm. and that's kind of what we what we got here on smackdown um yeah they headlined yeah it did feel weird though because at the same time like we've been getting the new day uh, alongside big e for a while um in these you know more we we saw that more on raw and more before the draft but we saw them Mm -hmm. in that spot whereas Mm -hmm. we've also gotten a lot of um, the Usos with Roman. And so I thought it was interesting yeah. that like, we didn't have Roman around or Paul Heyman or some of the others in, in this scenario. But great match. Just like strange because I feel like I'm so used to both of these teams being plugged into the oh, their storylines picture. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the great point. Like, uh, hopefully, this is leading towards actual storylines for the tag teams themselves as opposed to them being peripheral characters to the, the what main a good word. Right. Yeah. That's a great yeah. word. Peripheral. I'd be thinking. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, next up, uh, Maggie has to talk about these wardrobe choices. We got Rick Boogs <laughs> and Shinsuke Nakamura. <gasps> versus oh, happy corbin <laughs> and madcap moss we just we just killed everybody's headphones right there um in a trick or treat fight which is a street fight with pumpkins and stuff maggie what was your uh initial thoughts on, on all well my first note about this is that they're just beating the shit out of one another with sticks yeah um, that was my yeah. first note Candy, um, candy but, corn painted sticks, mind you. Yeah. Oh gosh. How could I, how could I forget that crucial how detail? Forget? Um, yes. But I okay. So they're dressed up for Halloween, or no? These are no. just their costumes. <laughs> Not at all. Okay, Not. Because why yeah. is one of the guys in a button-up shirt with red suspenders and like pants? Yeah. Like, like, why does he look like he's performing at a musical theater showcase? It's practical. Yeah. It's practical. Well, I don't know. Mad well, then the Moss? other guys are in like a singlet or a, 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 a is that what it's called? A, a yeah, singlet? yeah. No, no wait, wait, by the way. Like, oh my god, that's practical. <laughs> that's great. Not. Also, <laughs> yeah, sorry, but Maggie, Maggie, he's wearing a uh, denim. <laughs> A denim, denim painted singlet. I love that. I, don't think I love that. that. Yeah, it's, it's supposed denim to look like overall. Yeah. It's denim painted, but it's not actually denim, so he can move in it. Unlike yeah. the suspenders. <laughs> so mm-hmm. Like, the, I feel like that was very not the right choice. If he's So, a, a little background. So, Madcap Moss and Happy Corbin, they're like dicks. Like, they're just dicks. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they're like, they're dicks because Corbin wants some money. So, that's why they Corbin has on the faux Versace mm-hmm. shirt. They have their mm-hmm. hats. They think they're all like big. You know, that's why they're things. dressed up like they're going to the club versus exactly. yeah. being in a wrestling, a wrestling ring. ring. Exactly. All right. And, then, All right. and so and then Rick Boogs, whenever he's normally in his re- his like regular street clothes, he like looks like a, a guy from like the 80s, like an 80s workout tape. Like he always has um like uh overalls with one strap off, like bright colors the the tom Selleck mustache like he 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 looked like he walked straight out of the the 80s or whatever mm. and so um so i don't i can't remember, i don't think he wore this the last time he wrestled but i love no. that he has the singlet that's supposed to kind of look like overalls like it's such an 80s feel still and then uh nakamura shinsuke nakamura is the intercontinental champion he's a japanese superstar and he he just comes in whatever he wants to look like. It's always something badass sure. looking with like red leather or something. But that was cool. Lots okay, like yeah. those were traditional wrestling outfits. That's why I was like, yeah. what is happening with this man who looks like he's going to be in a production of uh, Newsies with his sister? Yeah, I mean, his, like you know, 
<laughs> yeah, him and Tommy Bracco would have a great yeah. time doing Yeah, that. exactly. So, and and th this is the tag team we mentioned at the top because uh, Shinsuke Nakamura has a really cool theme song. Rick Boogs always plays him to the, the ring with his uh, guitar. Mm -hmm. And so they're really mm -hmm. just fun. And then I don't know if you saw... I think it was in the clip, but at one point Shinsuke Nakamura had, I think it was Corbin in the corner. It was either, it was Corbin in the corner. He waited till Rick Boogs grabbed his guitar to play the guitar. And then he was like shaking his foot on the guy's face. Uh -huh. I can't remember if it was in the clip. It was such, it was so funny, but this is your, again, your very on brand trick or treat street fight. And mm -hmm. every year, I don't know if you noticed the crowd was yelling, Pumpkin, pumpkin. Oh no! Oh, yeah. I didn't notice like that. Like some flavor of love. Because every year Stop, you have Matt. to get the spot. <laughs> I know. You have to get the spot where you somebody puts a pumpkin on somebody's head. Like that is like Fun. the spot mm -hmm. that everybody yes. looks for. It, like mm -hmm. we all know it's coming. You, even once once you see it coming, it's it never disappoints because you just have to do it. And Shinsuke Nakamura got the pumpkin on his head. Yeah, and then runs into a a lariat by uh, Baron Corbin. It, but, it's then, the but then at the end, there were two other guys who came in who were spooky pumpkins, who right. like you know yeah. helped the or like they they clearly were like someone important, like you know the spooky woman with the shovel in the earlier match. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, yeah. so clear, yeah, so Matt, you have them up. Like they they were also wearing scary pumpkin masks, and clearly there was something going yeah. on there. And this is where yeah. my, you know, general hospital days of our lives feeling comes in where I'm like, clearly mm -hmm. there's something happening here. I'm not privy to it, but like, okay. Yeah. So uh, Madcap yeah. Cor Corbin gets the pin on Rick Boogs because um, two mysterious people help them come to find out it is Angel Garza and Humberto. They're the cousins, right, Matt? They're the cousins. They're the actual cousins. Because I know it was a storyline, but I'm pretty I'm sure. I'm not on their 23 and me, Mari. Oh my god. Anyways, but they're they're another tag team, uh, Maggie. They're I'll like take uh, word for it. I forget what they 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 haven't given them a name yet. No. no. Yeah, mm -hmm. but um, they're another tag team, and they're just getting involved, and it was pretty funny. That's all. Yeah, yeah fun. Get some heel heat there. Yeah, I. They were just being creepers before they took the masks off. Like really really uh, slowly walking up the steps and on the apron and so um i was surprised that it was them actually i wasn't expecting it but me neither you know what we there's love no context time. for this maggie but it's, it's like we're, we're getting the it's tag we're getting for, the tag team action yeah, yeah and we're but we're it's building it's i think kind of building the tag team division let's yeah. see how long that lasts but exactly it is good that they're trying to do something there exactly too many pumpkins a lot of pumpkins. The but the the Human. people wanted the pumpkins, y'all. The people were were wanted the pumpkins. Pumpkin, 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 yep. pumpkin. pumpkin. <laughs> so was, finally, yeah. let's talk about Naomi versus Shayna with sure. Sonia as a special guest referee. So, okay, a few things. First of all, yeah, a few things. A few things. Such a great. Again, I I'm still loving the storyline. I still love okay. that. Um, Naomi and um, like Sonia Deville, who is a uh, WWE official, is using all of her official uh, power in her capacity to mess with Naomi, because I, I I love that because it's getting Naomi over. People love Naomi. Is she? Uh, yeah. Is sorry. Is Sonia a a wrestler or she is she, only a ref? She is a wrestler. So she's a wrestler. But, okay. But yes. she has been in the for the past year, she's been working as a WWE official. So she's kind of like a um like she's been at contract signing, she's been making matches, she's been a WWE official. She hasn't wrestled in um ooh, at least a, almost a year, maybe a well, year and a half, two, a year and a half or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like since SummerSlam last year. Oh, and okay, okay. She yeah, so, but yeah. she kind of wrestled last week, kind of. Yes. Oh, yeah. Technically, yeah. Technically, even though she hasn't like really wrestled, wrestled as part of this yeah. storyline, but yeah, yeah, she does it all. She does. It and all. then, yeah, she ke and she's been seeking Sh Shayna Baszler on Naomi. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I love the movement of this storyline. How you know? However, poor Naomi missed her um, her springboard. I've never seen 
this is probably like the first time I think I've seen Ma- Naomi I, board. I think, Mari, that here's my theory with that one, with that mm-hmm. slipping thing. I think, I don't, was she supposed to hit it? Or right. was Sonia? My theory is Sonia yeah. was supposed to knock her off the rope. I thought she was so standing too. right there. I thought so too. And then it was so smooth. But I'm pr- that's my so theory. Too. That's what I'm sticking with. That was my theory as well. At first, I was like, oh, dang, Naomi missed her, her springboard. But then I was also like, Naomi never misses her springboard. And then I, I looked back at it. I was like, Sonia was very close to that rope. I, I, I do think it was supposed to be like Sonia was supposed to like hit the top rope make Na- make it look like Naomi fall in order for Shayna to get the the um upper hand but I guess we'll yeah. never know no 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 I it's... think that this is a good theory and I will also yeah. add that I think the camera angle sort of made it seem like that was what was going to happen because it really just right. made it look like like Sony was supposed to be like boom I'm going to hit the rope and make you fall exactly. which did not happen but maybe it's just us being so creative and being wrestling fans that we think maybe that should have happened they just didn't plan for it Exactly. Exactly. I, 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 I agree. I think it would have made a lot of sense if that happened. So either way, um, Shayna Baszler still got the win. Shayna Baszler still choked her out. It still moved the the storyline forward. Afterwards, we got Naomi. Um, <laughs> and not only that, but Sonya did the, the quickest three count. First of all, she did the quickest three count. Mm-hmm. She didn't count for Naomi at all. Um, so no matter what, it, we still came out of it like, oh, Naomi was screwed. Afterwards, Naomi was walking back and she said, Sonya Deville, whenever you decide to hang up your you know, officials coat, I'll be waiting for you like to wrestle or whatever. Yeah. So I don't know. What did you think about this, uh, Maggie, real quick? I thought I thought it was fun. And and the story was really clear. Like the story was clear that Sonya was evil, headed out for Naomi, and then the like after show interview with her like the girl who won um yeah, Shayna, Shayna Baszler. Yeah. when they were like they were like what do you have to say about the fact that you only won because Sonia has it out for Naomi and she was like no I could beat anybody and do anything I thought I thought like yeah. it was like a very fun traditional like wrestling sort like this is the story sort of exciting storyline I would expect and it yeah. but it was really executed very well Yes, and I think that that's a great call, Maggie, because like it also is now Shayna is like pissed because people think she mm-hmm. can't really go out and and you know hurt somebody when she can. Mm-hmm. Um, Shayna is actually Shayna has an MMA background actually, uh, mm. so yeah, that's why she does that that choke out. So I yeah. I like this. This was so fun. It just gets more people on Naomi's side, and I thought to myself. Um, like in the middle of the match, I was like, hold up. They have to set up for Survivor Series. Survivor Series right. normally has a traditional five on five match where like five women from SmackDown go up against five women from Raw. And I was like, oh my God, is Sonya gonna try and keep Naomi off of the SmackDown women's like Survivor Series team? That could be another thing that they could use to further this storyline because i'm pretty sure they ha- they uh, they gotta start building towards that soon it's in three weeks so mm-hmm. um either way this is so so great uh but uh i i'm excited i i love this for naomi she said she wanted um a storyline a really good storyline before she eventually retires and that's what i i I think that's what this for is. sure. This is fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She, she needs to like, I, I like that she's getting this time and I hope that it will, maybe there's like a path that they see for her to propel her into the championship picture after this. Cause she's been there. It's just been a long time. So mm-hmm. we'll see. But see the funny thing about this is like, I don't even care about Naomi being in the title picture at this point anymore, because like she said, she's been a, 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 a women's champion. But they never booked her as a, the woman's champion. Like when she was holding the title, they never gave her any solid feuds. Like they really didn't. They just had her going out there and wrestling people, and it, it just like wasn't fun. Months. 
Yeah. Yeah. For for yeah, exactly. For the two months that she had to belt. So like her just getting this time and this space and this storyline enough for people to then get behind her and want her to win. Like this is what I'm I'm really really invested in, and I'm I'm just really happy that this is what we're getting and this is what she also wants to the point where Give I don't even care about a championship to be quiet. Give her the championship too. Give Naomi everything. Sure. Give her her flowers. Give her, Give her her glow. Give her her glow sticks. Give her her plush pins or plushies. I don't know what those things are called, but like the little or the pop, the the little pop figures. Those two do that. Mm -hmm. she I, oh, she everything. she does. I, she has a Funko Pop. I have one. Funko Pop. That's what the kids call it. Thank you, Mari. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. All right. So um, that's it for the highlights of the week. Again. All of the highlights of the week, all the clips that we talked about can be found in a very easy to watch playlist that can be found in your the YouTube description yes. or your podcast description in the show notes. Um, such a fun week in wrestling. Maggie, what are your takeaways from overall from what you what you've seen? Um, I think that these people are such amazing athletes mm -hmm. and like they're I mean, they're doing choreography. Right. And yes. they have to be able to keep themselves safe. And I think that like if you watch wrestling and want to like wrestling is sort of like a scripted TV show a bit. Right. Because there's yes. like storylines and all of these things. But on top of it, like they're not just like acting. They're also performing these incredible feats of agility like and mm -hmm. strength and all of this. So I, I really in, enjoyed it much more than I thought I would for sure. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not, like I said at the top, I'm not super into violence, but like this actually, it felt safe to me. If that makes sense. Yes, exactly. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it's like stunting. It's like choreography. It's all the things you said. Mm -hmm. It was just so fun. And I'm so glad you liked it. Thank uh, you for inviting me. No problem. Who are like your favorites? Like who, yes. if we continue to send you clips, you'd be like, I want to know how this. I want to know developing. what's truly. I want to know what's going on with like Naomi and the ref woman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Um, I also too. liked the guy. I. I want to call him Tommy. That's not his name with the blue streak <laughs> down his. Like he was. Yeah, Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, um, but like, I thought that he was probably my favorite, like, male wrestler. Wow. Um, nice. Yeah. That, those are probably the two that I was like the most invested in. Wow. We're so happy we could get you to dip your toe into the yeah. wild, weird, wonderful world that is just wrestling. Just a toe. Just, just a little bit. Just, just a, a little toe. toe. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so, Maggie, where can the people find you? Plug your shows. Plug yes. all Yes. Okay. So, on Tuesday mornings, you can find me on the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City wrap up with Jacob mm -hmm. Jones. He and I are taking you through the whole season, and it's been a really fun, exciting, awesome season so far. We've been having a great time. Um, so check us out in the Rahapa feed where people yeah. can find you. Same feed. Mm -hmm. um, I I am also on Instagram and TikTok at MLMorgan underscore and on, in, on Twitter at underscore MLMorgan. So you can find me at all of those places. Um, hit me up. Say hi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where I'm yeah, at. We'll have those linked in our description as well where they yes. can find you. Yes. Um, Matt, where can the people find you? Oh, you're on the Wrestling or Hop Up or mm -hmm. at uh, Bryson When Presents if you go back a couple of days. Um, they, I or, think they saved them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, no, you could, you could find me wherever I will show up. Um, but, <laughs> uh, but right now, mostly you can find me at Matt Scotchy W on the social media. Mm -hmm. Hit me up on Twitter, tweet us, and yeah, let us know what you think. It's always great to hear from people. I could not say that enough. Thanks for making it to the end of this episode. Mm -hmm. Mari, where could the people find you? Of course, you can find me here every week on the Wrestling Rehab Up podcast, but also you can find <gasps> me on Post Show Recaps, doing an what? insecure recap show. <laughs> with, Woo! Uh, yes, yes, the great Latanya Starks and uh, Chappelle. 
Uh, every week we dive into an, uh, the latest episode of season five uh, of Insecure because it is sadly the fifth and final season. And I'm so excited I get to um, cover it yeah. with those two amazing people on the amazing uh, network uh, that is Post Show Recaps. So yes. just uh, you can head over to Post Show Recaps uh, feed and you can find us in there. Just like Maggie said, you can find us on the RHAP recaps feed or on the Wrestling Rehap Up feed. Um, before we go, I just want to say, like, um, if you haven't listened this week already, go check out the Bachelorette Rehap Up podcast. Yeah. Um, every week, Amy and Haley cover <laughs> what has been the busiest year of Bachelor <laughs> uh, so far on the Bachelorette Rehap Up. This week, I think they had Rourke on. They have uh, lots of great guests on um, from time to time, including myself. They always already promised mm -hmm. Matt that if there's a wrestling theme date that uh, they'll have us both on <laughs> this oh, season. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> But you want to get their takes on the romance, the roses, the right reasons, and more. Whether you regularly watch the show or you just want to stay plugged into the highlights, you'll come away with the date ideas, relationship tips, All advice for yeah, for what you can do, how you can find yourself yeah. competing with other 30 people for the love of your life. I don't know why you'd be in that situation if you're not on The Bachelorette, but... I it's uh, it's over, it sounds overwhelming to me, but that's one reason why it's good to tune in and listen. Like I am not the biggest Bachelor or Bachelorette fan. I've watched a, like literally a couple episodes of the different shows this year. Been very overwhelmed, and yes. listening to the podcast, <laughs> listening to their podcast is also really helpful and therapeutic because you're like, what is going really? on here? Like, mm -hmm. what are these? Oh my gosh, the germs! <laughs> First yes, of all, mm. exactly the germs. They, 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 yeah. The they also keep you up to date on everything that happens in Bachelor Nation with like breakups, hookups, any they news do. or anything like that. And of course, you can always follow along uh, because they do a like a Bachelor draft. And so uh, this year, th this season, they had Asia Welch on for the preseason draft. So yeah. just check them out. It's such a fun time. I love guesting on there. Um, yeah. I always, whenever I can, I always love to bother them with my my takes and my thoughts, even if I'm not on the show. So shout out to Amy and Haley. Uh, you guys are doing it so well. Um, but other than that, let's get out of here. We will see you next week. Watch out for any flying elbows. Bye. Bye. Bye.